So how about how about we have a go at three, two, one? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the B and Dao stream today on uh, this thirteenth of February, twenty twenty-three. Happy Valentine's Eve, everyone. Hope your loved one appreciates that you're watching me. What a great Valentine's gift. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, I hope you have had a wonderful week and will have a wonderful week ahead. Uh, all I get to do is, all I get to say is, I'm a bit of a prophet because uh, I've got, got a whole trove of things to say. Um, and who knows, but uh, until then, well not until then, but before I get into that, let's hop into the game. So let's do a quick transition yet again. Mm, where's my game? There it is. Okay, cool. So, uh, the last stream was the first stream of me playing Metroid Prime, my favorite, my most favorite video game of all time. I super duper 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 love this game so much. Um, and uh, I wanted to preface, also for reference, uh, pretty much the last stream was the first stream, so it's from the beginning of the game up until I've gotten the ice beam. Everything on the way, which means I'm only 35% through the game, but that's 35% of the items you pick up. Uh, I already have 65% of the scans, and most of the scans you're going to see, like, you know, the first time you go in an area. Once you're kind of going back and picking up all the items, you're not going to see the scans as often. So, but I'm also thinking, well, we've got more than half of the, you know, the items that help you access things, so, or access things. So, what I'm hoping is that we got a nice smooth stream. So, uh, anyway... Uh, you might remember, uh, Chozo Ruins, take a look at this map from the overhead. Uh, there's a few rooms you might be also wondering, like, how come I haven't gone this way? Because technically I can. And how come I haven't gone this way? Because technically I can. Uh, there's better times to go back to them. But, uh, in particular, you might have also noticed that there's actually a, uh, thingy on the wall. So, let's go up into there and continue on our merry adventure through the world. But actually, really interesting, the fact that you get this ice beam, and then you're just gonna notice... Look at that. It's a wonderful elevator that leads back to the Talon overworld, but this is an elevator I've not gone to yet. And this will put us off at an interesting point? There's actually, there's another elevator which is such a red herring elevator, I hate it, because it puts you in a part um, where you just can't continue. Like, you can look around and go, yeah, I don't know what to do about this, so, anyways. Uh, we got some gamers. Gamers are still imperceptible, in impenetrable to the ice beam. So, uh, is it this room? Uh, no, I think it's the next room. Yeah, yeah, yeah super obvious. But uh, look at that. There's a <laughs> there's a missile expansion right in the way, and there's also some uh, little thingies there. Well, that's cool. Uh, anyways, uh, this one's gonna be a fun room for me. This is a giant lake. This, uh, building might look a bit familiar, but in particular you might hear some space pirates having a, having a good old go from everywhere. So I'm gonna try my best to just duck around here. Uh, but yeah, there's a big, big jump to just get down and then, uh, just work your way back out of the lake. Dealing with water is a bit of a pain, but, uh, notice how, hmm, there seems to be. This crate appears to be the same type of container found on the Space Pirate Research Frigate. Frigate? Frigate? The material seeping out from the ruptured metal is highly toxic. Analysis indicates that this may be the Phazon compound the Space Pirates were using in their biological experiments. Now this is the fun bit. This is your first actual exposure to Phazon itself. Also, I love, uh, you know, freezing these guys in the air. Because it just means missile just, you know, works so well. You can come into this room uh, after you get the missiles and I think also after you get the morph ball. But, again, it's one of those you can't do anything about it kinds of rooms. Uh, but you may be thinking, okay, well where was this exactly? Well, uh, down this little corridor. And uh, here's a ship. <laughs> this, uh, this elevator, all the way over here just casually leads to, I don't know, it doesn't look anywhere close on the map. Because, like, that's all the way down here, and then it's like, how does that get all the way here? I like drawing the map, making uh, the Chozo Ruins a lot more north of the, uh, the, um, Talon Overworld. This map isn't, like, quite to scale in the sense of you can't stack every elevator on top of every other elevator and make it work. But one thing you can do is you can make the, the sections line up fairly alright. I, I feel like there's a, there's a bit that lines up alright, so... Um, 
So anyway, I'm a bit of a prophet because uh, on the last stream I was chatting about a topic uh, of an IGN article saying remakes, you know, should strive to be more than the original uh, of, the, of a game. And they basically said, yeah, like we are long, well, they could say remasters are still alright. Um, but they basically made it a big point saying, you know, hey, if you've got an IP for a boring game like Shadow of the Colossus, or at least a, a dated game, I don't think they've called it boring, and I don't want to characterize them as saying that. Um, but they definitely said, like, a game that's dated, and not because that's just intentionally the way the level design works, or the game design works, or even that they even understood the game and don't appreciate the brilliance, although I've never played uh, Shadow of the Colossus. But, you know, the bits of emptiness that people say Shadow of the Colossus has is kind of the point. There is something about that, and unfortunately this IGN writer didn't get. But anyway, I, I basically said, hey, you can turn Metroid Prime and you can just like give it the HD treatment. You just up the textures in the models and you let it run at a nice frame rate and resolution. And, well, actually, it's still at 60 in this, and it runs at a mostly smooth 60. You will notice hitches and very occasional points, but um, it does the job, and especially for the resolution, although things always look neater in Dolphin because there's like a degree of blurring that's always on the... um. GameCube. By the way, I'm actually going to go into this brand new direction. So you're going to see some rooms that we haven't seen yet, but this room is pretty much blocked off until you got the spider ball. So, uh, which at least it's right after an elevator. So you can immediately go, oh, okay, I can't go in this direction yet. But you can go in this direction now. I like dropping off here just because it's a ledge on both sides. I don't think you need the beam necessarily, but I find it's the most. Oh, okay. I find it's the most convenient to come back here later. They, these guys are a joke now that you can just, you know, freeze them and take them out. And you can shoot down these uh, slactites. Which is all cool. Let's duck down. This kind of reminds me of uh, the other kind of twin, twin chamber tunnel. You gotta shoot more stalactites. It's, they're all over the place. I'm actually gonna switch to the wave thing because you can see there's a wave door at the other side. Um, but yeah, I just said, you know, give this game the HD treatment. You don't even have to change really anything because it works so well. Uh, really all you have to do is just make the game, you know, nicer. I said, I even said, like, I, or at least I hope I said, you know, there's some remasters that bring forward or bring back features from the newer titles. So, like, the, the Ratchet and Clanks have a better control scheme in the later games. Uh, I love this as well. This guy shows up and you just go, hit this. Funk. <laughs> so good. Um, but uh, yeah, in comes uh, Nintendo with a direct on, it was Wednesday for us. Um, it might have been Tuesday for all the Americans. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen this guy yet. This is a puddle spore, sentient floating lava mollusk protected by an impenetrable shell. A puddle spore opens when approached, attempting to intimidate with its size. When open, direct fire to its mantle causes it to flip into a defensive position. If it can slam shut, it ejects a spread of harmful energy globules. Globules? So just shoot him. Oh, well, that's the energy globules. Shoot him, and he flips over, and he becomes a platform. Very fun, you know, very, uh, platforming enemy. There's more to this room, don't worry, but there's not enough to it right now, so don't worry ahead about it yet. You know, these fellas from way earlier. You're probably going to notice a lot of uh, rooms that I just kind of go over a lot quicker um, than other rooms, so that's all cool. Now I got a room full of these guys, but uh, yeah, on uh, Wednesday for us, Nintendo announced uh, various things in the Nintendo Direct, but uh, most relevant to this discussion is... Uh, Katamari, we love Katamari, uh, finally, they are doing a remaster of a game, and they're just, you know, all it needed was the HD treatment, that's right, um, there's a bit of a, bit of a joke about that, so I believe if you scan this, it says the machine is functional, but it's not receiving power, which is your big hint to turn on your thermal visor, and we can finally see there's actually some, uh, some little charged terminals, I think they're next to all of these doors. Which are a little bit harder to see, especially with YouTube compression. I've uh, seen it firsthand, but trust me, I'm navigating around this room. If you ever struggle to see things, just switch out of this view. Uh, but no, real talk Nintendo announced a Metroid Prime remastered out immediately in digital, and in two weeks, or a week and a half now, it's out on the 22nd uh, on retail. Now, it's 60 Australian, I think that equates to 40 US, um, and uh, it's effectively 
a HDified version of the first game with the control scheme from Metro Prime. Uh, there you go. So if you go down here, by the way, because now the lava is cooled, you can come around to this other side and scan a panel, which now access to the east door is now open. Now this now briefly gives access to the east door, but you gotta rush around quick before it cools cool into the mouth. Cool. Well, actually, after it cools, before it gets hot again, you can hear the beeping and it gives you panic. Um, but uh, yeah, it's exactly playing this game. You're able to also use the control scheme from the Wii, Metroid Prime 3, and or Metroid Prime Trilogy. More. Um, they also have introduced two different twin stick controls, which might, you know, make it a little bit more normal to people who want to play with a twin stick layout. Um, but it's effectively this game in all of its glory. Uh, I don't really think there's anything that different other than uh, I think I remember seeing someone say. Oh my gosh. I remember seeing someone say that the, uh, hopefully I'm going the right way. I think it's the purple room. There you go, I'm hearing something good. There you go, turn around. Look at that, an energy tank. Just chilling here. How cool. Um, I think I remember seeing someone say that, uh, there was a little bit of UX that wasn't quite, like, as clean as it was in the GameCube game. And I think there's always going to be that thing of, it looks this way in the GameCube, and it's just impossible to turn it to HD while looking normal. Um, perhaps there's a bit of that, but uh, for the rest of it, you know what? It kind of looks like what I thought it would, at least from brief glimpses, brief bits. Again, there's other rooms that you can go into, but uh, I think this is the best way of going forward. So someone judge me for... Actually, someone legitimately. If you know what you're doing with this game, judge me on the path I'm taking this whole route. Because I want to know whether this is like a fast route or whether I'm actually like meandering around a ton. But uh, this elevator, which there's a save point behind the elevator, is a real interesting move. At uh, least to the Fendrana Drift South. The Fendrana Drift South is a bit of a curious room because I'm... I think very right at the end, um, like, this will tie in together, but it's gonna look a little weird at first, um, but yeah, up into the Fendrana Drifts south, here we go, Fendrana Drifts, now this room has two exits, one being a Morph Ball exit, but you might actually see based on the map that there is uh, a path to the quarantine cave, and yeah, they're, they are directly linked if you go in that direction. I'm not going in that direction, I'm going up towards the ice door. This is why you need the ice beam, because you basically need it for this door, and you're gonna need it to continue on here. So, we got a few things in here, heed not what is in that that ice, in fact, actually, I'm pretty sure, can you scan the ice and it'll tell you, this ice blocks a tunnel, blast of heat should be able to clear it out of the way, and that's a bit of a hint for later. I hate that you need the ice beam as well, and then you gotta switch for the this beam here. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're going down, uh, oops, going down this room. There's a, there's a bit of a cheeky room here, but make sure you drop down, like, this way. Because, yeah, you can see on the map you've got two, uh, two rooms in this, or two doors in this room that are stacked on top of each other. I'm pretty sure this is the one. Yeah. Now watch out! Here's a quick s oh wait, I've already scanned that game. I remember actually the ice beetles were the reason why I got PTSD, the ice beetles were the thing in my last in like my original Let's Play back in 2010 that I missed. I tried scanning everything for the worst route, but yeah. Check out these guys. These guys are pretty cool. These are the gliders, docile airborne creatures with unusual magnetic properties. Gliders live a relatively peaceful existence. They have a magnetic signature attuned to common grapple beam technology. The spot of Gligar riding, the sport of Gligar riding rather, involves using a grapple to attach to a glider, then staying on it as long as possible. That is very cool that there is a sport of glider riding. Um, there's a, oh, there's a bit of a meandering around this room, but. So I'm pretty certain you can't get the, the missile, but you can can hit some of these. I'm pretty sure this is just a jump you can do, right? Just making your way up here. I guess it's a little bit out of the way, probably because there's something directly on top of me. Where is that? Oh, there must be a way up there, right? Yeah, there's a, there's a thing right there. Yeah. 
I just need to step back enough. Can I reach it from up here? This is a bit of a weird room because of all... Oh, okay, a bit further. This is a bit of a weird room because of all this. I'm curious how this game does play with the twin stick because... I'm a bit of a purist, I always feel like a lot of games you should play them kind of how they were originally intended for the most part. Um, even if some people might say Goldeneye on the N64 with a mouse and keyboard hack. Uh, here's a save point by the way, but also there's some cool scans you can have, like all Metroids are destined for the phase on ranges and the mines must pass inspection. And temperature affiliated behavioral index for Metroids is available at all research terminals. Access code LIF22. What does that mean? Metroid Prime 4 in 2022, perhaps? I guess that's the sad part, is that uh, you can all kind of tell that the team was split and half the team was just geared towards, you know, making a new Metroid Prime remaster. Because I guess this is the second one, because the Wii one technically counts. Um, I love this tube. This is such a cool tube. Yes, I know a lot of these tubes just go forward, but it's fun in that, so... Anyway, this room, I believe, you don't actually have to do anything, you just go down into the... Oops. Into the depths, and you gotta watch out for uh, these enemies, which are absolutely fun. They are absolutely fun. I hope you appreciate the gimmick, I'm gonna read them out now for you. The Gel Zap, aquatic predator made of electrically bound skeletal halves. The Gel Zap's brain is located in the upper half of its body, while its heart, uh, while the heart and digestive tract occupy the lower half. Linked only by electrical impulses, the two halves somehow function effectively enough to launch the Gel Zap to the top of Talon 4's aquatic food chain. Yes, this thing tries to eat your electrical signal, and if you get close enough, it just kills your visor. Your visor has to reboot. You can still shoot things, but you can't lock on. Which is a little annoying, so... In the water, a bit of a crawl. Why can't Metroid crawl? I don't know, but... Uh... I want to kind of remind you of how slow Samus is in the water. It is horrendously slow, and there's only a couple of times you're ever actually required to. So fun fact, if you ever play this game, avoid the water. we got another room that looks almost like the previous one, but trust me, it is a little different because there are two slack sites right there, and another one which I believe you can hit from this angle, which is amazing. And I'm pretty sure I just killed some things as well. That's pretty cool, but this will give a little bit of a nice. This will give a little bit of a landing path to getting all the way over onto this side. Um, but yeah, so yeah, if you have the Switch, you can play Metroid Prime now. I originally said go play it on the Wii U. I now can say go play it on the Switch. You have the ability to play it on the Switch now, and from the looks, yeah, it there's no issues. There's, well, this, there's nothing really too glaring. Uh, is 60 Australian, 40 US an apt price? Up to you. It is an older game, and someone's gonna say Nintendo overcharges the heck out of their games anyways, but I also think it is Metroid Prime. I think this game does hold its value fairly, fairly well, so. Powerful aquatic tentacle, part of a submerged organism similar in nature to the surface-based Reaper Vine, the Aqua Reaper is adapted to a liquid environment. It shares the poor vision of its rock-dwelling cousin, Quotes, relying on a crude sonar sense to seek prey, unhindered by water, the Aqua Reaper has considerable speed and strength. That's right, it's the same enemy, but in the water. And you got these fun gel zaps in here. Now this is a fun room because, uh, um, I guess you could be using, like, other weapons as well. This is a fun room because, uh, you've just got to trek through some water. It's an absolute slog, but you know what, that's the intention. There we go, whoops. You can, double, you can double jump once it gets there. You gotta make the player feel like trash for going through water. And don't worry, it's uh, fairly well designed and straightforward. And he sucks my visor yet again. Hop up a bit more and look what's chilling in the water here. By the way, yes, you can scan the items. It just says the name of the item that you're about to pick up, so... Sure, okay. But, uh, yeah, no, this is... Uh, the gravity suit, as I spoiled in the name of the item. I hope you appreciate that it is the same animation again, but hey, I don't mind. This thing's cool as. I love it.
gravity suit has been acquired. Movement in liquid environments is no longer hindered. That's right, that thing that I was complaining about is no longer an issue. Hooray! So, yep, and additional one, but sure, okay. So now, you just move in water like you usually do. Just like Super Metroid. I guess someone might say that there's a lot of items that are in Super Metroid that are also just in this one. Like, you got the waving, that's me. Greetings, Blob, how's it going? You have caught me at the beginning of a stream this, uh, today. And, uh, and I was just mentioning that, uh, I am a prophet because, uh, here I'm, I, I was just saying last stream about, uh, how remakes can be fine as long as the games, uh, um, you know, they, they age well. And here we are, Nintendo announces literally a remake for this game. Uh, so yeah, now you have no excuse to not play this game. But, uh, you do have an excuse to not play the sequels just yet. But I think it is a bit of a proof of concept. Like, hey, if people are confident with the, you know, the motion control schema for the first game again. There's these guys again. Let's see if we can get them with the ice beam. I don't think I can freeze. Nah. And they're a bit fast. Uh, but they do die decently, okay. I also love how these guys sometimes take out your visor again. Uh, more importantly, we have a release date for Advance Wars. Yes! I thought it was kind of weird that the trailer was just like the anime. It, it didn't. Well, not the anime, but like it was an animated trailer and they didn't actually show any direct gameplay this time, even though it's Advance Wars, it's a remake. Like, I mean, we should know what it is. Um, yeah, also, yes, we're on the higher ledge of this room, uh, which I don't believe there's an easy way to get back up if you fall. Yet, you can see exactly what's going on here. Analysis indicates a viable attach point for the grapple beam. Your grapple beam was destroyed from the explosion on the research forget and currently cannot be used. So, okay. Uh, this one's a fun room, especially if you accidentally go in the wrong way. But now we can go through water. It's no sweat. Uh, but yeah, you, you might accidentally go down this room if you if you accidentally uh, fell too far from the room ahead. You'll see where we end up. Go. Man, I got these quick parts here. The funny thing is that uh, my entrance in Advance Wars was just right. You know what? Same for me, actually. And to be honest, I don't remember too much about it. I remember getting very angry about the, the blob enemies near the end of the game. Um, I never scanned these, by the way. The missile ammunition that replenishes five. Did I scan the Ultra? I have scanned the Ultra, though. So. But yeah, I've got to make sure I don't catch myself out by never scanning that. So. Uh, True, yeah, the, the campaigns, yeah. I do remember I played a ton of, um, like, custom maps. I would, like, look on, like, custom map places and I will just try and, like, manually recreate the maps and try and do them. I love that about Advance Wars and I thought that the balance of the, well, the balance of the items. Meanwhile, literally, like, we'll go on that room later, don't worry. But for now, I'm exiting out. We're bailing out of this place already. Um... But then the, the Neo tank clearly is like so much better in Dual Strike, so I was just like, yeah. I also have a copy of, of uh, Days of Ruin, but I unfortunately never played it a ton. Um, I don't know why. I also bought Fire Emblem Awakening as the only Fire Emblem game I've played, but, you know, same devs. Kind of annoyingly, uh, the Fendrana Drifts is home to not one, but two items that you literally have to go get and immediately just leave from. Because there's no other main items in the Fendrana Drifts, I believe. That is almost the entirety of the place. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, I've got to wander all the way back. Fun fact in German, they aren't called Neo Tanks, but Titan Tanks. Titan is a cool name. I wonder why they're not called Neo Tanks, though. Like. They're just curious thing. Watch me touch all the little bits of fire on the way, but let's try and quickly get out of here. This time I don't need anything. We got the, the big flying dudes behind me. But yeah, I always feel like I, there's something I'm not getting because I'm not like crazy into Fire Emblem. And uh, I say that knowing that I think the new one came out in the last week. If it was not the last week, it was the week before. They, they've been doing very early of the year releases for Fire Emblem. I remember Awakening came out like March 2012, I think. No, was it? Or was it like very early in the 3DS cycle? I know it was like at most a year, but I thought it was a year after release. So.
Uh, here, shout out to me being lazy in more of these rooms. Uh, you could work your way around and dodge the lava. I took 15 damage, I don't really care. <laughs> but, like, there is a point where, like, you have so much health in this game. I only played the remake of the original Fire Emblem on the DS. Only Fire Emblem game I played. Neat games. Yeah, I, th I think Advance Wars, I love the, the kind of, you know, going at it. Yes, I know, I know. I believe you can't cheese it on the on the other direction um, for that room, but I don't know, I'm just like walking through it because why, why go through the spider ball track if you're just gonna get to the other side? Um, yeah, I do agree. I do prefer the fire. Sorry, the the Advance Wars gameplay. Um, I'm also a bit terrible at strategy games in general, and Fire Emblem falls into that umbrella for me, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but that's okay. So yes, big wandering back to the same rooms, you know, classic Metroid, apparently. A lot of people dismiss the Metroid games because they have horrendous backtracking. And I, I do agree very small parts in this game, but I think there is enough flow that it works pretty alright. Um, I guess my only gripe is that, like, yeah, from the ice beam, you have to go all the way here because there are clearly ice doors. And you cannot proceed onwards until you've got the gravity suit. Uh, there's a bit of that, where it's like, uh, you gotta get the space jump boots from the, the first world, or the, you know, well, not the first world, literally, like, two rooms uh, in this direction. So I feel like some people are probably gonna comment on that, and be like, oh, the game should be reworked a little bit. I wouldn't mind, real talk, it'd be sick if, uh, a, you know, any of these games, whether it be Zelda or Metroid, officially supports randomizers? That'd be kinda cool. You know what? Randomizers are okay. Uh, so... Anyways, also, yeah, randomizers are good fun if you want to, like, re-inspire a bit of, uh, playing of a certain game. And I know that the Metroid Prime randomizers are very well thought out. Like, they've got, they've got some good tools available, so definitely give them a check if you're curious and just kind of sparking a bit of new love in these games. Um, I learned about Archipelago yesterday. Archipelago. Why don't they just take one shot at all these guys? They don't even, like... Take anything too strong. Uh, the randomizer project. Oh, uh, no, give, it, give me a rundown, like what it is. Um, but anyway, with the gravity suit, we're now able to wander into this lake this way. I feel like the gravity suit gives you, like, visibility. I swear I couldn't see much in there, but, uh, with the gravity suit, you can grab this missile expansion. Also, yes, 100 missiles. That's. Only 40% of them, so it's not just randomized for certain games, it actually follows you to link multiple games for a multiplayer session. Ooh. That's pretty cool. There are a couple of sport games. I gotta give it a check. Remind me at the end of the stream to, to give it a check, or even better, uh, 8.58. I'll just write that down, 28 minutes into my stream. There we go. Now, yeah, you might be looking at this and going, hmm, this is a big building, isn't it? Well, if you can't tell what it looks like from the outside, and some of the internals might look a little weird, but... Uh, wander through some of these tunnels. And this is what I love about this part of the game. Suddenly it's like... You know, you, you go down this long tunnel shaft and you go... Huh, this is starting to look more... Oh, I don't remember the fishes being here last time, but this is starting to look... A little more and more familiar. As you go through, and this is one part, it blew my mind as a kid, it's just like, wow! This is the ship from the beginning of the game. Even it's got these turrets, which, uh, for some reason they take more damage. Like, hold on, let me, let me try and go through. I'm pretty sure they are the same turrets if I try to scan them. Yeah, they're the same turrets, but for some reason, which you can freeze, I love how you can freeze them. Um... Yeah, it's, a, it's the same turrets. The door has no power, so you know what that means. It's obviously one of these. Yesterday I watched, uh, the guys I watched were playing Risk of Rain 2, Ocarina of Time, Hollow Knight, Super Mario World, and Pokemon Red together. Risk of Rain 2 randomizer. Isn't Risk of Rain 2 already a randomizer? Maybe, but 
Uh, watch out for this scan. This is a bait scan, I'll tell you that. This is the Talon Crab, crustacean native to Talon 4. Hardshelled swarm uh, life form, once harvested for food exposure to Phazon, has seen this practice diminish. Creatures are timid and harmless alone, but can be a problem when traveling in swarms. It's another one of just enemies crawling in a direction, although they do crawl around you. Ish, almost. Almost. The, <laughs> they don't crawl at you. Uh, every game will randomize an ice machine between all five. That's kind of curious. That is really curious. Now here's the thing, if you don't have the gravity suit, because for some reason if you walk around all these rooms, you get absolutely like, you know, thrown off in this room. Uh, this is the big room where you fought the, uh, um, the Parasite Queen. And there's a couple of dudes chilling around it, but in particular you want to reach out and... Actually, I think all the, all the terminals are on the ground, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, uh... You only have to go through this area once right now. You never have to come back here again. But uh, this is a really cool room, and I just love how you get to see, you know, the destroyed parts. Granted, with the terminal visor on half the time. Uh, the website is archipelago.gg. I should give it a look. Anyway. Oh, the guy. Oh, okay. So in order to unlock an item in another game, or rather, to get an item, you might need to play the. Ah, that's pretty neat. Is it just like house rules on like, you know, determining what, uh, you know, who, who needs to get what and you're not allowed to continue or is it like it actually does stop you? Uh, by the way, check out the save station room because for some odd reason they have still got a save station there. I love that by the way, that's, it actually does stop you, oh, okay, okay. So yes, this is the, uh, the save station right from probably 15 minutes into the last stream. Uh, again, I, I love this just, you know, going through another area with a change in, in attitude, a change in, in style. Uh, whether this means powering doors with your with your wave beam, that's why a couple of games support- Ah, okay, yeah. But then you can just randomize between those games, so that's, that's pretty neat. So, this is cool. This is the big, uh, room- I mean, you can- you can tell it's that big room where you have the- the joining bit here. But also, watch out! Because there's an energy tank in here. This is the eighth energy tank out of 13, I think. So, starting to get a lot of them, I'll tell you that. Uh, this room is good fun if you forget to turn the thermal visor on as well, because you'll climb up it and not see that there's, like, anything along the way. I'm pretty sure I didn't skip any down here. I just. Okay. Yeah. It's a bit of a rip if you do accidentally, like, keep going up. Get him at it. Oh. There's a little bit of a finicky room, because when you shoot these guys, they come back like 15 minutes. Plan 100%? 100... Well, 100%? I'll plan 100%. I'm getting there, though. Like, what am I up to now? 40% with a 69 logbook? I, I know I was at 35% at the end of the last stream, but uh, when you get... Well, I, I guess I'll gauge when we get to about two hours, because if it's going to take me, uh, like, one more hour, I'm down. If it's going to take me two more hours... I'll back out of that, because that's, that's going to be nutty if I do a four-hour stream. I'll have to do four hours. Um, so yeah, I, I also love how, you know, you're going through this place backwards, basically. You start at where the... Um, where the Parasite Queen was, and... work back through all the rooms. Kind of observing that there's a lot of cool items in some places now. Like, uh, and, and also, there's no power in any of these rooms. Uh... Okay, let's just hop down. Which goes into water. Oh! Hi there! Oh, these are aquatic versions. Yeah, sure. Standard. Aqua drones, security mecha adapted for use in underwater areas. The space pirates have adapted a number of sentry drones for use in liquid environments. These aqua drones utilize an arsenal and artificial intelligence suit similar to their cousins. The pirates have been unable to properly shield these drones from electrical attack, making them vulnerable to the wave beam. Basically, it's a randomizer that does not randomize the items of each game within that game. It takes all items from all games and then randomizes them. How does that, like, present itself in a game? That's what I'm curious about. Um, by the way, here's a door. Someone finds an oh, it gets sent to the oh, okay. This is a cordite door, and you might remember cordite is good old super missile. It's been a while since I've been using that. Burn five missiles, and you get five missiles back. So it's kind of cool. 
Uh, okay, I know there's three of these in this room. I'm just hoping I... Okay, one is up there. Can I see it from here, or...? Eh, nope. Hey, I got it! And there's the last one... Oh, there it is. Nice. I do like these these kinds of uh, tools, like uh, stuff like retro treatments. Was there another super missile thing? Uh, no, it, I don't know why only one of them breaks. That's a very specific one, I don't know why. There we go. Got a lot of these Aqua Reapers still. This area actually, like, I mean, the beginning of the game doesn't feel like it takes too long, but people, when they get to, or someone manages to finish their game, all the remaining times in the game. Ah, okay. Um, definitely it's like, you realize that there were a fair number of rooms you went through. Imagine getting frozen underwater. And not floating. I'm sorry game, I'm gonna have to rip you on that one. Uh... I think there's a degree of like, someone's gonna say like, Oh, this game's not realistic because the ice isn't floating. It's like, pfft. Like, yeah, I, I get it. But also, it's like, yeah, that's, that's not... That's not a deal breaker for me. I get it, it's fine. Um, I think it's because you have to turn on the power in like, six rooms. Like, it's a lot of effort. And then you've also got to keep like, doing these, uh, these jumps to get across. There we go. Aqua Reaper. Everyone likes an Aqua Reaper. But don't worry, because, uh... I love this as well. This guy just starts floating up. He's done. He's out of here. That's because we've got uh, Aqua Sax will burst when submerged to impact, subjected to impact or trauma. Believed to be in the same family as the Sap Sack. This plant has similar features. It will burst when exposed to force. This protective response keeps most creatures from feeding on it. Uh, but if you hop down far enough, uh, there. Yeah, there we go. We've got another door. And then, uh, up through here, we got another one of these, uh, 2D rooms. This is actually a pretty neat one, because the, the water pushes you up. Sorry, the, the jets push you up, so you gotta somehow time your bomb to land on it. Oh. And it's like, it's not quite the same as the other triple bomb jumps. It's a bit interesting, a bit different. Oh, 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 ah, I wasn't playing. <laughs> My brain didn't prep to go left. There you go. <laughs> uh, yes, that is uh, Energy Tank 9, that's right. Both 8 and 9, or both in this place, so... This is what I mean, so I'm, now the items are gonna start, like, going real quick. Also... Uh... More of these, uh, gel sands. Gel sands? It's... Uh... Oh my god, hi there. Okay, let will just skip past him, but uh, walk your way up. And we're back in Talon Overworld. And we got these little cute little enemies, they're called seedlings, they're so cute. Plant-based ground feeder, dorsal spines can be ejected in self-defense. Great description. They blow up in an instant. Uh, poor, poor guys. Uh, but yeah, this is um... This is the town overworld, and as a kind of interesting note, I guess, uh, there's an elevator, I think, on the upper side. Actually, bonus points. Yes. Very, very important reminder. Um, when you go to this room for the first time, uh, if you... if So, where I got the ice beam, there's an elevator that goes to here. But on the other side of this awkward spinner wall, they just really arbitrarily put a barrier in the way. So now you don't have to ever... <laughs> you know, go through those places again. You can just go up to where the you know the elevator is and just come out this side of the of the um you know the frigate. So yeah, I think that's the only time you have to go in there. Uh, but anyway, there's some radiation detected. This has uh, been ominous, isn't it? Anyways, behold. The axon to the phase on mines east. This is the final, uh, I guess, world hub area of the game. 
the Phazon Mines, and uh, it is this place as a kid that I started to incredibly struggle because there are some kind of long stretches that you have to go without any, um, you know, saves. But uh, it's very, very ominous at first. Uh, I still need to go all over the other place, but this is the last new area to really go to um, until you get to the very, very end of the game. Um, but also, I think you only ever need to come here twice because you come here so late in the game. So the phase on mines, when you start off, uh, first things first is just head up here because uh, <laughs> as a kid, the first time I came here, I didn't even realize that there was a save point up here. You gotta scan the door to get in there, so. Um, but yeah, the phase on mine still has a fair bit going on, of course, because, like, how big has every other area been? And, uh, yeah, I haven't even browsed any of this yet, so... Now, first things first, obviously, they have better turrets, which you can clearly tell from a distance. These are mega turrets, perimeter defense turret, reinforced with energy shielding. Frustrated with inferior armor, plating on the standard defense turrets, Space Pirates added energy shielding to a modified heavy cannon. The new shielding and increased beam strength makes the Mega Turret an efficient point defense weapon. So I believe they can still take the wave beam, uh, but you can still do uh, almost all the phase. Will they take two missiles? Or three missiles, maybe. Three missiles. So. They're not too bad, though. And you can turn off the force field by scanning a thing. But there's actually, oh, there's actually there's two things to scan. Um, I love the way that this area is set up. That you, like, suddenly now we have, we're back to a lot of, like, various space pirate engagements. So they're just chilling up here. They jump all over the place, they sneak up behind you. They're going on all these ramps. Chilling up there. You're gonna see me do that wave beam strat, because it works so well. I love as well, uh, hold on, let's, let's get the goods. I, I love as well, there's a guy who pops out right here. It's a good meme. I love him every time. This jump scares me like the original time I played this game. Uh, but working your way up here, you'll find a couple of panels. Report all phase on mutations of the science team immediately. All units with useful mutations will receive an increase in pay and rations. Elite and trooper candidates are now being selected by command. That's cool. Transfer of building materials complete. Processing of materials for Xenome Containment Units underway. And, uh, scan this. The crane controls are functional but require power. Ah, yes. Turns out. I just needed to shoot a, a wall with some, some wave beam. There you go, now it's green. Uh, is there anything else really that big with the, the direct? Um... I'm happy about the Etrian Odyssey games getting uh, re-releases as well. They seem actually like decent attempts at converting um, the DS game. Uh, by the way, moving the crane breaks the wall, which is uh, very important because uh, now you can take this and ride it all the way up. I love how this goes a bit transparent. Just go on the other side here. And hop down. You can get another missile. Hooray! It's a bit of a drop. Uh, the other scam was here. It's just too bad. Um, but the only thing about the Etrian Odyssey games is that, uh... Oh boy, the price. Like, they were DS games. Uh, I feel like, you know, the, the average rule of thumb is, like, people wouldn't pay as much for a DS game as they did, like, a, a main console game. And they're also charging 60 bucks each. They're importing three of them, charging 60 Australian each. It's Australian, by the way, not US. Oh, go in quick, because there's a scan at the other side that disables these. Very handy, very useful. Saves your height a little bit. Now wander into this next room, and uh, this is the bit that kind of like grilled me as a kid. We got more Shadow Troopers. Now, as a kid, I never realized these guys are a bit resistant to ice, although they do break after a while. You can't really lock onto them unless you do this, I guess. I keep trying to missile them, but they die immediately after that, so... 
Uh, there is a red door behind this force field. So just to double remind you, that red door is off limits. You're not, you're not going into that room yet. Uh, there's a turret at the top here, isn't it? Maybe when you come back into this room later. Now, I think this is the bit that really, really got me as a kid. And suddenly I was like, oh, jeez, what am I dealing with? So because the game knows that you're going to be juggling different beam weapons now, they've introduced uh, these fellas. These are... Wave Troopers, Space Pirate armed with Wave Beam technology. Space Pirates have reverse engineered several of your weapons, including the Wave Beam. A flaw in the design makes these pirates vulnerable to their own beam weapon system. These weapons are inferior to your Chozo design originals, but still quite potent. So, they have made enemies that are only weak to a certain beam type. This is a very, very... I mean, granted, we've already seen enemies um, with this stuff. This also includes missiles, by the way. Missiles are off-limits. Um... But this makes uh, these uh, these enemies real interesting to fight because suddenly you're now forced into fighting these enemies perhaps in a way that you're not 100% used to. You're going around, you're having to go, you're having to go, oh jeez, look, what's a wave beam, you know? Also, they put, they keep putting doors on the ceilings that kind of close immediately and go hop to them. Oh, I thought I, thought I got them there. I got him. It's all good. I love these uh, breakable walls as well. Like, really only in a handful of parts, but they're very good fun. Uh, these are regular old space pirates. Don't worry about these guys. There's a bit of lore down here. Uh, recommended battle systems for elite pirates are as follows. Shoulder mounted plasma, artillery cannon, repulsion shield, wave quake projector, an energy siphon system, and retractable wrist bayonets. That's right, if you're looking at this, go on. Huh. You know I didn't code EPG 8642, batch 23, field designation, elite pirate alpha. Stasis tank hull reinforced with bendesium. We don't know about bendesium yet. There's a bit of space pirate data. Initial project Helix experiments with space pirate embryos were disastrous. The phase on infusion process degenerated brain tissue. Even as it augmented muscle mass, none of what we have termed elite pirates lived to maturity. The few that survived their infanthood suffered severe psychotic breakdowns as juveniles killing anything within their zone of perception. Research team Sierra made a recent breakthrough in which parasite studies uh, with phazon strain code named Vertigo were highly successful. Since then we have successfully fused Vertigo phazon with space pirate DNA with great success. The latest batch of elite pirates have reached maturity successfully and are ready for field testing and training. Uh, the super pirate, the elite mobs are the super late game. Uh, uh yes. Yes, that is correct. Um, <laughs> You'll look at this guy and you'll be like, oh my god, like, what are they doing? But uh, yeah, keep this in mind, and especially when they highlight in red the name of the glass surrounding the guy. Now this is a bit of a fun room, because you work your way up, and you go up to a floor, and uh, they put up some little barriers in the way. Very nice of them, and uh, more wave troopers, which means you're forced into fighting them this way and... Oh, okay, sure. And only this way. I get on hard mode if uh, enemies take more damage. I know you take like double the damage. Activate the platforms. And yes, you're hearing an item. Uh, I'm not playing on hard mode now. Security alert all stations. Bioform Samus Aaron has made plentiful in Talon 4. The hunter is among us. <gasps> All units are hereby ordered to attack Aaron on site. Terminal forces authorized report all sightings of Aaron to security command at once. It, do I really? I don't know why. I'm a, I'm a juvenile. I'm reacting to um, the words "among us" on their own. Like "among us" was yeah, there you go. "Among us" was 2020. No, it wasn't. It was actually 2017. It was, it was ages until it even became a meme. Uh, here's the Power Trooper, space pirate armed with power beam technology. Space pirates have reverse engineered several weapons, including the power beam before and the design makes Yeah, same. Thing. Now the fun part, and this is actually a very curious nod that the game kind of lets you in on. Um, these guys are weak to the super missile. There's a specific thing to note. The super missile is a uh... yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a very pandemic game. It was in Glass Onion. Uh, here's a fun thing, by the way. Scan that, and it turns on this laser. 
you can turn the laser a little bit. And you can actually turn the laser all the way around, but in particular, if you've got it facing in that direction, it reveals the path to go forward. Now, if you put in the effort to... Oh gosh, I think it's on the left. I think it's on the left, off the top of my head. I'm gonna see as well if you can tell with the... No, you can't tell with this, interesting. They don't even tell you, but you can break in all eight directions. There you go, there's a, there's a missile expansion in that one. They build a pipe that goes through here, but they've <laughs> forgotten that they've put missiles in the wall. I don't know, man. I got something. Maybe it caved in or something. So, but yeah, you can use uh, your super missiles on the thingy. Now, this is a bit of a drop. Uh, so, let's take this room normally, because I usually just, like, jump down here and then cry when uh, I take that from that. Like, that actually took off an entire energy tank. That is a killer freaking room right there. Uh, now this room... Oh my gosh, what a jump! Oh yeah, you can take these guys out and the way. Okay, yeah, that's, that's your reference point. Or you can just do this, like, this is why you pick up all your missiles. Um, but yeah, you might actually see that my health is starting to... get there. I think we're, we're definitely fine, but, uh, it definitely starts taking real big hits. Um, so, okay, so the thing to note about this room, you see that there's a blue kind of path over there. There are three different morphball tracks that all kind of go up in various bits, and there's three sections of this rotating pillar, and you can rotate them on the floor that you're on. Uh, so you're probably going to note that, okay, well, in order to get up to the bottom floor, which exits via the blue route, you just have to, you know, match the blue with the blue. Seems easy enough. And you get up here, you're on the second floor now. You want to match the red. So... Swirl it across. And that's going to spin over. And now I'm going to hop down and match the red side back to the, the red side again. Which uh, awkwardly is uh, around three times. But it's a fun puzzle. It gets you thinking in 3D without being too 3D that it makes no sense. Especially when they color code the spider ball tracks very conveniently. Thanks, Space Pirates. Appreciate it. We're looking out for you. Yeah, especially, like, I, I think, um, and this is something people take for granted. This is 2002. This is definitely after 3D games have, you know, really made sense. But this is like a year after the GameCube's launch. This is like before Halo 2, before um, like uh, I don't know why I was going to say Rayman 3. There's a big thing blocking the uh, the, the last unit. Bendesium. Hmm. Well, I wonder what we're going to get next. Continue onwards and uh, at least this is just like these enemies. You could actually look over and take them out or you could just drop down because I really um, and I love this as well. This is a elevator, but it's just a, a mild elevator. You get to actually see this nice view of uh, this one <laughs> structure I've still not even visited yet. Uh, this is the Impact Crater, which is uh, kind of the central part of the whole world. Um, unfortunately, it's really only visible from like here. The sequel makes a bit of a better note of, you know, highlighting the central structure of the game. Um, spot that there's a bit of an explosive box there. Hit it. And it also takes out all the space pirates who are hiding in the ceiling. So Scan these electric enemies. You can. I've scanned them already because they're the same ones from ages ago. In the ice, in the Fendrana Drifts. Uh, like they're all over the place there. Now enter this room and oh look at this. Here's a big guy. It's kind of weird, you walk past one already, but uh, this, this is the one that wants to wake up. He's got his own music, that's how you know he's serious business. This is the Elite Pirate, a phase-on enhanced space pirate, incredibly strong, armored, and well-armed. Elite Pirates are potent foes, their energy siphon system absorbs beam weapon shots. The nature of this system makes them vulnerable to concussion-based weapons. Well-armed, the Elite Pirate is effective in close combat, and at the distance their massive size can be a weakness, and the sluggish speed allows for evasion and quick attacks. 
And it's got a thing on its back, if you notice, a plasma artillery cannon. It has extreme thermal signature due to lack of shielding. Cannon connected to its energy siphon system to augment performance. Void beam weapon fire when the energy, energy siphon unit is active. This is basically, uh... He's gonna fire these weird grenades they are gonna hit behind me. After you hit him enough times, he's gonna, you know, hold some egg yolk here. Exactly, some fun foreshadowing right there. You can hit him as long as he doesn't have his beam thing out, which sometimes has his hand, but it doesn't do the egg yolk effect. But trust me, he's doing it all the time. You can also attack the thing on the back if you really want to. Uh, I think you have to kind of manually aim for that. He doesn't take two hits, but he does take more than you're used to. Like, he's definitely a bit of a mini-boss. Also, he exploded and took out all the, the computers. How kind of him. I hope you like this music, because I'm going to be reading out a lot of stuff over it. A shipment of military-grade plasma artillery cannons is on route to Talon 4. The Eganoid. Eganoid Star Marines. We acquired them from... We're letting them sit in a warehouse. Our elite pirates, on the other hand, put them to good use very soon. Lots of lore in this room, let me tell you that. So, Space Pirate Encrypted Data. Investigations since possible ingress point for the impact crater continue to meet with Vela. The shield of strange energy that protects it is impermeable, and all attempts to tunnel past it have proven fruitless. A continued futility in this matter is made all the more significant in light of the recent lifeform readings we've discovered emanating from deep within the crater. Analysis of the readings indicates that a mass of creature is just staining there, absorbing enormous amounts of phazon from the phazon core at the heart of the impact crater. This discovery makes accessing the crater doubly important. Not only will it open the door to the vast deposits of phazon within, but it'll also lead us to this creature, whatever it may be. Uh, Security Command issued an all-point alert after the fall of Zeebs. The alert concerns bioform Samus Aran, also known as the Hunter. Subject is a female hominid and is heavily armed and extremely dangerous. Subject uses a powered armor suit of unknown design in battle, along with a number of potent beam and concussive weapons. All combat units are instructed to terminate Aran on sight, preferably in a fashion that will allow salvage of her powered armor suit and weapons. A considerable bounty will go to the unit who delivers Aran to command, dead or alive, it matters not. Uh... There's this log, which is one of my favorite ones in the entire game. Uh, science team is attempting to reverse engineer Samus Aran's arsenal, based off of data acquired from results on our forces. Progress is slow but steady. Command would dearly enjoy turning Aran's weapons against her. We believe we can implement beam weapon prototypes in three cycles. Aran's power suit technology remains a mystery, especially the curious morph ball function. All attempts at duplicating it have ended in disaster. Four test sub subjects were horribly broken and twisted when they engaged our morph ball prototypes. Science team wisely decided to move on afterward. <laughs> I love how they give a reason why they've got the beams, but nothing else. Bioform Samus Aran continues to assault our holdings of Talon 4. Security has been compromised multiple areas. Casualty rates are rising. Commanders authorize a sideboard bound for the capture of termination. And Aaron, report to your field officers for details. Security level towel will be uh, in effect until further notice. All leaves cancelled. Pending down. Ah, oh, leave is cancelled. Consumption of elite nutrient mix by non elite units is strictly prohibited. Uh, to comply, we'll result in a 50% ration deduction for a decacycle. 10 years, jeez. And uh, here's another, uh, just, you know, a phase on nutrient fat. <laughs> I'm trying to just eat up all the, all the stuff, so. Ah, I'm not eating them all. Uh, yeah, a cycle could be a day. I always think, like, it's, it's a year. Or rather, it's an arbitrary. Oh, jeez. This is an ice trooper, it's the same thing, it's just ice. And uh, you'll be pleased to know, yes, you can do this strat. So they're, they're fine until they're in a nice shell. I feel like a day is too short though. Because they did say that like, they were researching Samus's tech, and it took like three years for the beams. Uh, evaluation of plasma artillery cannons complete the weapons to fully functional, but a flaw has been discovered. Subpar thermal shielding gives them a high heat signature. This could make them easier to target for enemies with enhanced vision capabilities. Maybe I should be using the thermal visor next time I see one. Bioform Samus Aaron has cracked our systems. The hunter can access our system at will and is able to bypass most of our security programs. Use manual, manual locking systems when possible. I love that as well. Like, Samus does indeed have to tech to scan space pirate stuff. Facility commands request for elite pirate transfer. The security force is granted. Prepare units. Ugh. Got it. Cool. Metroid aggression levels are rising. Be alert for any attempts by Metroids to escape from quarantine areas. Their energy absorption ability is not able to disrupt our force fields, but continued exposure to Phazon may change things for the worse. Uh, analysis indicated that the Hunter is using Morph Ball technology to infiltrate our facilities. Recalibrate sensors to search for Morph Ball energy signatures. Okay. Uh, yes, there is even more lore. There is a room full of it. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. 
Uh, results are in from field studies on extinct bioform group Chozo. We believe that Talonfall was once a stronghold in a great Chozo empire brought low by the meteor strike. Planetary devastation brought an end to the Chozo, yet remnants of their society remain. We are studying these relics in an attempt to harness their power. What is of no use to us, we destroy. In time, we shall have all we need from this dead race, and shall wipe this planet clean of their ugly ruins. The dead should serve the living, not hinder them. Nice opinion there, space pirate. Appreciate it. Uh... Although we are still no closer to finding the artifacts of the Chozo, we have at least produced a viable hypothesis for their function. It appears that each of the artifacts corresponds to one of the statues on the temple platform, and that each one acts as a small key to a huge lock. Judging by the number of statues, we assume there must be 12 artifacts. Once we find the resting spots of all 12, we can bring them here, unite them with their statues, and open the gate system at long last. Once we do, the impact crater and whatever creature it shelters will be ours for the taking. He's right. I mean, he's got a point, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, phase on infused fungal harvesting continues, replacing a deck of tritol, try to kale with phase on infused fungal matter and elite ration mix has been authorized. Cool. Security request deployment of elite pirates in metro quarantine areas. The high casualties suffered by standard pirate units deployed in metro areas is not acceptable. Uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. There are ruins that have active defense systems that kind of hinders. True, true. Reconfiguration of security drones authorized to blow in new drones to mission critical areas. Dude, yeah, that'd be like if, like, Canada, like, all the bits in the north were just, like, filled with, like, spike traps everywhere. It's like, yeah, I'm not keeping the spike traps for historical reasons. The spike traps, bro. Uh, here we go. We have come to another dead end. It is clear now that we will never discover the locations of the Chozo's artifacts until we can decipher the messages carved into the statues in this abominable temple. Our language databases are woefully inadequate, and our linguistic analysts can come up with little more than vague theories. The best hypothesis that we can offer is that finding artifacts will require items spiritually linked to the Chozo civilization. However, without these items, we are lost, and the command grows more impatient by the day. Results must be produced soon. Okay. Uh, by the way, that that's kind of hinting at a thing that you could have seen ages ago, which is to actually get... You can scan the Chozo artifacts in the impact crater, which is close to the um, start of the game, to get the hints on where all these items are, but I haven't gotten any yet, so don't worry. Uh, there have been numerous incidents involving spectral entities at Chozo ruin sites. Several personnel have been assaulted by these Chozo ghosts. Few have survived. Survivors speak of swift attacks from nowhere, brief sightings of the enemy, then nothing only to be followed by another attack. Science team believes these attacks are in response to our efforts to recover Chozo relics and artifacts. Somehow these entities are able to interact with the physical world, and it appears they wish to keep their artifacts to themselves. We will make them pay for such arrogance, for even ghosts can be destroyed. He's got a point there. Point any sides of ration rejection by elites at once. Okay. Increased phase on portion of elite pirate ration by 18%. 18% is a good number. Uh, analysis continues on these cursed ruins and the Chozo temple that hovers near them. We are now completely certain that the containment field denying us access to the impact crater is linked to the strange artifacts that belong in the temple, but we are no closer to finding them or deciphering the riddles that seem to cover every wall of this ruined place. Command grows increasingly, increasingly anxious for the resolution to this matter, so we must redouble our efforts. X-ray squadrons will begin terrain sweeps within days. Until they begin, patrols are instructed to report any and all architectural anomalies to their commanders. Planetary cell technology is back online. We have evaded detection by the battle cruiser Emmons. The brief lapse in planetary security caused by the crash of our frigate is over. Now we can concentrate our efforts on the hunter. By the way, that's a that's a nice kind of nod that why is there no one else coming in all of a sudden? Also, I like how steel covers will be replaced with cordite and bendesium. Nice. Also explains why some covers you can break and some you can't. Although sucks to suck, they chose the wrong ones. So. Anyway, that's a lot of lore. I'm sorry, thank you for letting me read it all. Here's a big room. It's, it's got a half pipe in it, but, uh... Unleash... Unleash the, the Kraken! And the Kraken is, uh... Some of these little spore things. There's a bit of a voice line if you play the, the American version. You don't get any of that. I'm sorry, there's a little more lore. Which is from the initial batch of matured until Hunter phase. Be advised that the Hunter metric has a siphon tentacle that can attack with it from a distance as opposed to the close combat tactic used by the younger Metroids. Increased aggression levels observed in the latest elite pirate units. Uh, Laura's fine if you haven't read it in like true, especially in 12 years. Uh, increasing phase on feed by 0.07% per science team mandate. I especially haven't sat down and read like the non critical lore. I really like the frigid areas as well. That's a bit of a hint as well. I know there's a guy all the way on the other side. I'm trying to juggle two directions. Okay. I wish that though, because you can't use the missile. It just bounces off. There we go. You can't do anything over there just yet, so don't worry. Uh, I never played this game because I have no GameCube, but I watched the Let's Play. 
Was he mine? That was between 2009 and 2011. <laughs> Another guy chilling in the tank there. Oh my gosh, there's so much. Oh, let's take out these dudes. Cause... Remember, I noted the gnarly health I had? It's still gnarly, by the way. This is what I mean. Like, you gotta go a fair bit without, like, any support going on. Cool, I got access to the force field that was already off. Our enemies will tremble before the might of our elite forces. Unauthorized Metroid feeding is strictly prohibited. Death to the hunter. Death to all who oppose us. Uh, here's some more stuff. Elite pirate Upsilon's propensity for Phazon has enabled our research team to infuse it far beyond our safety restrictions, and the results have been extremely encouraging. Its constant Phazon diet has increased its mass exponentially, but it has retained all mental faculties and shows dexterity with all elite weaponry, including plasma incendiary launchers and the Chameleon Manta issued for cloaking purposes. Elite pirate Upsilon exhibits miraculous healing abilities. When injured, it seeks out Phazon deposits and coats itself in the substance, which instantly mends the creature's wounds. The subject, which we're codenaming a Mega Pirate, based on these devices elements shows potential to be a new standard for our armies. Our only concern at this point is its potential over-dependence on Phazon. Test results from battle simulation same as Aaron are saying. Elite units report a 74% success ratio against Aaron in testing. High command is pleased, but expects a higher ratio by the project's end. That's kind of cool. Uh, January 2010. Uh, yeah, I, I upload mine. Uh, increase in bamboo populations. There you go. Um, I upload mine in probably like October, and that was when YouTube started doing the 15 minute limit. But that was back when the 15 minute limit was, uh... I love how it was 10 minutes advertised, but they did always let you do 10 minutes 59.97, or like, one second off. There's a guy chilling in there. Okay, oh my gosh, more lore up here. Phazon processing security systems are taxing the dynamo beyond safety tolerances, so the conversion to geothermal power is easing the drain on our systems. There's not enough further power use at current levels could lead to system failure. Dynamo maintenance team is not responding to the service call. We're on request to the central command. Now, there's a big thing right here, and this is a kind of bizarre room. There's this enemy here. This is actually a boss enemy, I'm very certain. There's also two of them. You want to kind of line up some shots, because you can't lock onto these guys. They're kind of annoying. Uh, but also, you can't even... You can't even uh, scan them. This is an enemy that is just completely unscanned, and I'm curious if there's even, like... Part oh, hold on. I'm curious if there's a log somewhere in the game's data for this enemy. He takes quite a number of charge shots, and he throws you off if you have no idea what you're expecting. What is he called? I do not know. And then just, just to tip the icing, or, you know, put the icing on the cake, you gotta do this while still having, you know, barely any, you know, ability to heal. You've gotta go through this little morph ball maze. It's a very cool morph ball maze, I love it. Watch out for this electric, uh, yellow electricity? I guess electricity has usually been yellow if it's like Pokemon or something bomb a uh, bit of water and it just kind of, you know, fries the surrounding electronics. Going through the path a bit. Keep wandering around. There we go. And this gets you all the way into the center, which allows you to finally have everyone's favorite, everyone's complete favorite item. Is it everyone's favorite? I don't know. The power bomb. I love the power bomb. It's so bad. You can press Y, the missile button, while in morph ball mode, and you actually use one of your big three power bombs you got there in the corner. The keeping of pets has been suspended until further notice. Domestic beasts have been deemed highly susceptible to phase on madness, and thereby a hazard to personnel. All gronk cats and all baps must be disposed of immediately. Failure to comply will result in the loss of pay for a cycle and reduce rations. Entire uh, shift of dynamo workers has been transferred following bouts of phase on madness. Units have been reported to science team for use in the laboratory studies and the new elite pirate program. The dementia will make them adequate training adversaries for the elite team. So, uh, there exists actually a way to continue on, but again, this is one of those, like, you're gonna find something in the way that prevents you from going onwards, but look at that. Finally, a save point. Like, how long has it been? Jeez. So, big commit. And that gets you, that gets you that. So, 
The awkward thing with the power bomb, you might have noticed, uh, you've got a number when you're in your morph ball. You don't know how much power bomb ammo you've got. So keep a tracker, just count down how many power bomb expansions you get. Because, <laughs> uh, it's not the easiest to actually, like, get. I mean, you can get more ammo specifically from space pirates, but you can't expect it from everyone. That's kind of weird, like that. So, anyway, you just gotta work your way back, and hopefully nothing comes out and hits you in the face. This guy didn't. You th <laughs> I red herringed you. You thought you were gonna get hit by him, but nope. Ah, he's in the next room. <laughs> okay, so what am I doing? I'm using the thermal. Does this lock onto the thing behind him? It does! That's interesting. Uh, especially when he blocks my beam, like that. I'm gonna destroy this just for the sake of it. I'm just hitting him. I don't think I'm hitting the thing on his back. Oh, I did! I got it! It's not really much point, because it's not like he takes too much damage, and all it does is it prevents him from using one of the attacks, which makes him kind of more vulnerable, to be honest, because now he's just not doing the attack that he used. But if you ever found that attack annoying, you can break the thing on his back. That's a fun thing to know. Let's handle just, uh, just double make sure. I hate how long this fight takes, though, because did I just hit something explosive on the ceiling. There you go. I should have been using the super missile. Yeah, it's kind of weird that he just like comes out of nowhere and just, well, not nowhere, but he's, he's just chilling in that one vat. And what's really weird is that uh, there's a couple more that do come out. You'll see that there's one in various rooms, but anyway. Use your power bomb on this, which is made out of Vendesium. And uh, this reveals a room which has a map station. You'll be pleased to know, yes, there is indeed a map station in the Phase On Mines. I think the only place without a map station is the Magma Caverns. Uh, now the kind of this is the bit that I, I always thought was annoying about the the Phase On Mines. This place legitimately has rooms that stack onto other rooms, and I always get a little bit confused. When you're, you're looking at this, because you gotta like know, you know, what's on top of what. It's just weird with the orthographic perspective, but yeah, no, it's got a, it's got a map, and yes, it is three floors, but this is kind of most of the first and second floors already, so, uh, unfortunately, I'm on my way back out. So, now this is a bit of a fun one, well, you're gonna get kind of hit here, but you'll notice that on this wall, an activation panel must be nearby, and if you scan all the way over there, of the vent system. Are you sure you just power bomb here? Nope. What am I doing wrong here? Ah, that's that's a bit of a fun one. Oh. These guys just keep coming out though, but you're gonna hate the sound. Yeah, true, true. In case you missed the red door. Oh my gosh, I'm an idiot. The, the grating's right there. From this Bendesium grate. Yeah, okay. Cool. Okay, I hope I get another power bomb. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's all of them. I thought it looked fine on this side, but uh, activate this and the ventilation control is clear. The worst part about that red door is that, like, the reward that ends up being behind it is like, oh, okay, like, sure. It's remarkably, like, like, game. It's probably one of the last things I've actually got written down here. One of. It's not the last thing. Uh, but yep, there's an energy tank there, so... <laughs> after all that, if you did miss the, uh, save somehow, you can at least get out of there. Uh, yes, there is ammo for the... for the power... for the power bomb, and, uh... I would love to have it because you got to scan it as well. Uh, no, it's not a it's not a red door. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, the um the the path to the deep mines is not behind a red door. It's I think they're all pretty much ice doors. It's weird. I 
wouldn't mind. Wow, they're not gonna give me a power bomb, are they? Because I'm gonna get into this awkward scenario where I need a power bomb. I think I've actually written that. Yeah, no, I am gonna need a power bomb. I am gonna need a power bomb, so I'm gonna hope someone gives me one. This guy drop out here. Oh. There we go, that's one. Check it out, it looks like an ultra energy, but trust me, it's it's a power bomb. Gives you one. Oh, these other ones give me more more. That's missiles. And that's health. Okay. Oh, I think one's all I need. Um, yes, there was another kind of route from there, um, from that room, and that actually... Oh, you could probably even see it on the map. Also, that's a fun room we'll to go into. Uh, but back on the room below, this is why the sun's getting really hard to see. This leads downward, and this downward mostly just leads you to an exit and a bunch of rooms that you will not be able to go to, so don't worry about not going in that direction yet. Plus also, the goods are up here. Okay, let's hope that these guys give me a bit more juice. Uh, that's energy. That's energy. I'm not going to be able to hit these guys. Oh, I got one. Okay. I'll never know what he dropped. I'm gonna deal with one guy in a way. Or not. Oh, I guess he was above, wasn't he? Yeah. Anyway, with that, I'm back in this room, which conveniently I got one power bomb. So I will use that for this. There we go. So now I gotta get the yellow. Do I need another one up there? I believe the yellow faces the far end, so you want that. Now, just. So you don't mess yourself up, you want to drop down. Just so you don't have to readjust the blue again as well. But I love how it's like, you know, keep your eyes peeled, backtrack all the way here. You know, because like this room's clearly got like a Bendesium object in there. It's like, you know, you get the power bomb, that's the first thing you want to do. What is toxic that I'm standing right next to? It's just that wall in particular. Very interesting. Oh, it's because there's Phazon on the wall. The Phazon will eternally you know, mark your little indicator as being like, oh, it's a dangerous thing. So I think that's it. I think that's all good. This will have the yellow route go all the way up to the top. And if it doesn't, then whoops, I've got to readjust all the things again. I'm pretty sure you need another power bomb right here. That's a bit, that is a bit irritating. That is actually a bit irritating. So, uh... I'm just gonna hop down here, I'm just gonna keep... I mean, as long as you don't move anything in that room, that's gonna stay on that one, but like, it's so irritating. Like how I didn't touch him. It's so irritating that, like, no power bombs. Because you only get three. You only get three, and they're very picky on which enemies drop them. So I'm just gonna hope that going back to this room, uh, that one box gives me another one. This is always a deal breaker, because it's like, you gotta use... Four, yeah, you've got to use four by this point. So I'm pretty sure it was this box. There you go. At least, at least they're nice enough to have a box that always gives you missiles, energy, and a power bomb. At least. It's really only this game where, like, that's a big issue as well. I feel like the sequel is a lot kinder on the power bomb ammo. Anyways, back up I go. Oops, oops, oops. Uh, I don't suppose I could do a cheeky, like, jump over there. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, what? <laughs> Another minor thing. I hate how little power bomb ammo you get. I really wish you had, like, just maybe five. Would you look at this? Look what they were holding on to this whole time. Also, I guess, how many other items have I been getting? And the grapple beam is the last of the original items at the very beginning of the game to get. Hold on, lock onto a grapple beam point, hit the button and away you go. And that's right. And you get these symbols all over the place, I can finally scan these, and they're like, yeah, that is indeed a viable attach point for the grapple beam. You just press L when you get that weird symbol. 
simple enough, but it lets you get around to places you couldn't before, so that's pretty cool. This is another one of these aquatic rooms. I don't think there's really anything to it. You're just gonna go down to the other side. That's pretty cool, though. This isn't any, even the ice area, and I'm saying it's cool. Now, one thing I do find really cool is the fact that this links you all the way back out here, which if you scan this, it actually brings the crane all the way around here, allowing you... Oh, I got the grapple beam. <laughs> uh, and I'm back out in this main room, which now gives you a grapple point, so you can skip kind of going through the long corridors of getting all the way uh, here. So, anyway, back out to the entrance. I've got the grapple beam. I've got the power bomb. Now, this is good sign going forward. And, uh... Now we'll work our way back out, so... I think I've still got... Six items left to pick up? I don't know, six items and... <laughs> hopefully the plan is another hour and a half, but... We'll see. We'll see how we go. We'll see how we go by two hours. We'll see how, uh, how I'll judge it. But... I'll definitely let you know. Yeah, uh, I needed to get more power bombs, so I went back and got more power bombs. And I still have no power bombs, so uh, that's going to be a bit of a hitch. Like, right here. Let's just hope someone drops a power bomb. Because, yeah, the grapple beam's neat, but it's the power bomb you need. So the big thing is now I shall actually explore this room from the slightly higher... I don't think those guys can do anything meaningful, but... They're really not going to give me a good power bomb, are they? Maybe I should have stopped and gotten one more in case. Because, yeah, for, for reference, I'm going to go up to... This ledge down here. Oh my gosh, this looks very weird. Uh, we're gonna go around this. I love this little this little track. It gets you thinking about dropping off and hopping back onto power uh, onto more full fightable tracks. But yeah, kind of annoyingly. Uh, yeah, this wall requires uh, bendesium. Guess who's not been picking up any bendesium or any uh, power bomb ammo? So let's keep it wandering around a little bit. So, you might be wondering where this door led to, and I feel like this might help a little bit. Or one of these guys will drop it. Please, please drop- there you go. How kind of him. You're not gonna see it. I'll, I'll show you. There's a- there's a, uh, yeah, there's an elevator that leads to the Chosen Ruin South, which is exactly pretty much right next to, uh, the, um, where the Ice Beam was picked up. So you'd get the Ice Beam, you'd go through here, and then you'd be walled off. Because you can't go south, because there's a... Oh, nice, you dropped, it. You dropped another one. Cool. Well, I could always use more. Uh, you can't go further below this room, because there's a wall in the way. And you can't go further up, because you need the power bomb. And you can't get the power bomb until you go further down this room. It's a very mean elevator on a beginner's playthrough, but... It's pretty right, so... Anyway, power bomb! Finally! Coming through here. Uh, this is a bit of a cheeky room, because, uh... Astute people will note that you can, oh, you can get very stuck on the, the walls as you go around here. Oh, there you go. Here's a bomb here. Drop down the middle. Another, another missile. It's kind of neat. It's just there. There's something about hexagons being like sci-fi, you know, like that kind of blue that they use. Uh, keep going over here. And you reveal... Hey, check it out. You know how I said there were six items up? There's five now. Heck yeah. So this is the X-Ray Visor. The fourth and final of the visors. They don't even explain what it is. They just tell you. Yeah. It's an X-Ray Visor. Now, I love how this guy keeps leaking out here. Because he gives you power bomb ammo. If you need power bomb ammo, they keep giving you enemies. It... I mean, hexagons, they tessellate. How cool is that? But yeah, 
I love how the, there's always a guy. He comes out of this pipe. It, it just, it's just there. It'll give you a power bomb because you'll note with the X-ray visor, there's a lot more to this room than what the eye can see. So hop down, use your power bomb. It blows up all the surrounding stuff around this room. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm actually gonna let's go to the exit. So to get out of this room, you need to use your <laughs> Use your traits to realize that there is a very tight jump there. Yeah, true, true. Hexagons get overused. Like, um, I don't know why I'm thinking the, the aliens from that Chicken Little film. We got the hexagon like spaceship. Why? Oh, never got hexagons in space. Anyway, once you're midway in this jump, and I always hate this. Once you're midway in this jump, a bunch of Chozo ghosts come out. But, good for you. I think you had to take them out once before. Good for you, you've got the X-ray visor. You can see them no matter where they are and snag them with, you know, uh, well, snag them with uh, the uh, super missile. They take their time being on the ground as well. MG barriers and shields, yeah. Now, one thing I absolutely love about the X-ray visor is like, it's aesthetic. It's like visual design here. Yeah, yeah, like, it could just be smooth. There's no reason why, like, the ship hole has to be hexagons. Like, oh, yeah, they fit together. But it's like, yeah, like, why not be just solid pieces, you know, electron welded together. Once you defeat the Chozo, it goes, it opens the little pathway at the end. But I love how, uh, you can see very, oh, very thinly. Hold on, that's a easy way to view. What, the, what is the best way to, yeah, you can kind of see when I jump up in the air. Or even like here. Samus has her hand in the arm cannon in the shape of like what she's got in the on the bottom right. And you can see she does these well, you can't you can't really see when I do that, but you can see she's doing the little hand thing there. And you can see her like kind of flick like a finger a little bit. I don't know if that's real visible, but it's super cool that like in the X-ray visor, her hand is just visible as a fun little element. Here's something cool by the way. Bomb this. And this, uh, raises a little thing? Spin the, uh, the Morph Ball slot. Spins around. And it reveals, what is this? So, uh, yeah, remember those, uh, those keys, basically. This is the first one that I have decided to, to collect. I don't know, I find this one to be the most convenient, because you can just get it right as you get the X-ray visor. This is a Chozo artifact, and in fact, the game will say this is the 7th of 12. This is the artifact of Chozo. So nice. Now on this logbook screen, which 85% of the logs, so if, you, if you're worried about me reading out tons of stuff, there's not too much left. There's still a bit, but not too much. Uh, but that's one of the 12 keys you need in order to beat the game. This introduces, perhaps, some people's most divisive parts of the game, the fact you've got to backtrack all over the place to get all the keys, but trust me, I'm keep- oh my gosh, I'm keeping the backtracking to a fair minimum because you can actually pick up like two-thirds of the keys on your way through. I love how on the radar- I suck at doing this jump, I don't know why. On the radar you're like off the- off the map. Because this room is only known to be this tiny little thing. But yeah, so now I can properly do these jumps without the Chozo Ghost getting all in the way. You know what, you see what I mean about the map? You just, little arrows just over there on the wrong side. There you go, so now you're over here, drop to the hole, and make sure you don't drop down, because it's kind of annoying working your way back. And that's it, you don't have to come here over again, don't worry. So back out in here. Now with the x-ray visor, uh, keep an eye peeled for... There we go. Yep. Oh. I, uh, jumped, I jumped in his poop. Keep an eye peeled for this. There's a lot of platforms that just... Oh my gosh. Bro, I'm trying to, I'm trying to deal with this. There's a lot of platforms that are just, uh, other areas in the, uh, Yes, this is actually, there's a couple of it, bits in the uh, Chozo Ruins that are just all blocked off by this, but note the invisible platform, you can jump up the ledge and look at that, it's another missile expansion. Just waiting for that. 
waiting there. Accepting of us, so. So yeah, keep your eyes peeled for uh, rain bouncing off nothing. That's a fun little tell. I love it. Technically, I don't think you need the x-ray visor to actually get that one, but... I don't, again, I don't know what I just didn't open with that weapon. I was using the ice beam that whole time. Um, but okay, sure. Ah, oh, so back to the Chozo Ruins. There's a lot of goodies that I could have grabbed a while ago, but I thought now's the best time to go get them. Because they're all there. We've got almost all the, all the goods. Five weapons to go, so. Um... You could say by going left. I shall opt to pass that for the time being. I'm just going to continue going down this way. Lots of corridors to go through, but that's okay. Alright, now if I'm quick enough, I can open this door without uh, the ghosts pestering me. But they're going to pester me in this room. Okay. Oh no, that's fine. They don't care. There is stuff in that room, I know. But there's also stuff that you can't get. So I know I'm coming back to that room. It doesn't matter. I, I'll pick up that stuff later. Now, unfortunately, the Chozo guy is really fast here in this room. Are you missing any key item besides the face on suit and the beam? Um, no. Because uh, the other... I wrote down there's five items to get, and the other three are the, uh, the combos. Two ghosts. Okay, only two ghosts. The X-ray visor actually gave a bit of a hint as well that there's something underneath here. Here's the power bomb, and the ground breaks, unleashing a Tony Hawk half pipe. Hold down the spider ball and try and bounce up here, and then try and not get wrecked by these guys. I think this might actually be the Titus. No, this is the second Titus. This is the second Titus part of a. North Ball Fountain, I can think of, but this is definitely one of the meaner, meaner parts because you got these guys to deal with. And then you got to deal with probably the worst angle for a drop I've ever seen. That is actually one of the worst ones. Uh, actually, no, this one's even worse because your shadow doesn't even appear. A lot of times I just drop off and then it's just like... Whoa. I, I cut that one a bit fine, but it worked out. It worked out. Uh, and the missile expansion, just chilling up there. This is what I mean. It's like, like, good old Metroid, there's a lot of fun in how a lot of the items are hidden. And, uh, I especially love going back through all these areas now that you've got your tools, and there's still some incentive to go back, uh, just in general. But now there's a lot of, like, really neat things that you can grab. Um, So now we're going back to pretty much like right near the beginning of the game. Like, if anyone remembers going back to this room, I guess I did come back here. Hi there, room. There it is. Anyone remember Shriek Bats? I just walked into them, no sweat, because there's no problem with my 10 energy tanks now. It's a lot. Um, But I love just like, you know, going back through these areas and now you've got all these wonderful tools to help help you out. I believe I went up here already, didn't I? Yeah, I got that one already. So, going back into this room, this is where I got the charge beam. There's a couple of goodies to get. Oh look, that's a couple of trick bats dead. Uh, hop up the steps. I want to hop up the steps, bro. This is what I get for not using the power beam, because these guys are not, like, fun to take out when you're using other beams. Because the ice beam's slow as, so... Uh, you might have noticed somewhere along the lines of this wall, there's actually a bit of a crack. You can break this immediately, because you've got the morph ball. Bah, actually... You might not be able to break that immediately. But you can come in here after you've got the Morphle Bomb, so... No sweat, but... You gotta have the Charge Beam. You gotta come here to get the Charge Beam. And then, uh, break that, and there's a Missile. Just chilling in here. 
But also, an astute eye will note there's a spider ball track. Follow the spider ball track up. Watch out for the bee. And there's a second missile. These are probably the two quickest missile expansions you can get side by side. Well, at, at least if you come back here with the spider ball, which requires you to come back later in the game. So why come back here, you know, before you've got the spider ball, you know? You come back, you get one item, you're not doing it fast, you know? But I kind of like that as well. Just, you know, there is some reward to being a suit and going, ah, there was a bit down there. But now, peel your eyes to this, through the water, after you've got the gravity suit. Look at that, another, another missile expansion. I thought you'd, I thought you'd never ask. So. That's all to do in this room, don't worry. But I love how there's just three missiles all, all cooked in this room. And that's, uh, you know, there's only 50 missiles in the, in the whole game. So three of them being kind of in the same rough room area is a, a very nice snag. And yeah, as well, I guess that puts me at 30. Because I was at less than 20 when I started this stream. I guess I'm already now at 37 minutes, so. We'll see how we gauge. Uh, Trezzo Ghosts really have no chill, but fortunately they also have no way to disable the doors in this room, so I'm gonna proceed to ignore them. I hope you don't mind. This is the fun thing, is that now we're going through all these areas that, you know, I've already gotten all the items in. Uh, I believe I've already gotten this, because I've been through this room with the spider ball. So, it's actually already, already gotten, but I've never gone in this direction, and that's because uh, you awkwardly need the Varia suit. I don't know if they- yeah, the game's gonna prompt you about high, like, lava behind this room. But you also need the grapple beam. So it's like you need a bit of everything. Use the grapple beam to get across. And then use the power bomb. I know, right? Breaks this wall, revealing- that's right, there's more. Haha. <laughs> you thought there wouldn't be any. The power of our temple has been enough to halt the spread of the poison on Talon 4, but whether the evil can ever be truly destroyed is not for our eyes to see. The future is cloudy to us, a world of veils where dark apparitions flit in the shadows. Within this strange world, one image stands out in the mist, flickering through the landscape, wraith-like. It is a human, a lone figure, shining in the toxic shadows. We chose or do not know what it is, but our hearts swell with hope at the promise of that glowing light. We will place our faith in our shrine. We will be there when the light shines upon our land. And also, check this out, this is a power bomb expansion. And you get another one. So now I can carry one more, which is nice. Game B, like, hmm, you need pretty much the ice beam in order to get the grapple beam, but nah, just also. Keep your eyes peeled, there's a little, little hidey hole just there. Another missile. There's a lot of cheeky, cheeky little bits hiding now that you've got the tools to to attack it. Very annoyingly, this is another one of those you need to kill the Trezor Ghost rooms. This is, this is just me burning all my super missiles, but... I missed that one. There we go. So, <laughs> something alluring over there. The little hawk things. I think that's just what the Chozo look like, don't they? They kind of got these, like, beaks. Oh my gosh, really get me up there. There we go. Break one. And that reveals one bit up there. I'm pretty sure you gotta break the other side as well. Or not, actually. That, that was the secret one. There we go. Oop. There we go. Reactivate it. So I guess left one to continue on, right one to do the, the little secret goodie. And if I go to the track, and spider ball away through the little tube, would you look at that? little energy tank, just chilling here. So this is the 11th one. Is that two or three left? I don't know. Oh, look at that, you can't even scan that. Tiss, tiss. Tiss, tiss, Retro Studios. There we go, through the little tube again. Back out the other side. Now, you may be wondering. Obviously, we needed a room filled with a lot of pistons. It's called the Piston Tunnel, just to remind you that uh, they piston 
the tunnel. That, mm. The delivery was terrible, I'm sorry. There's a pissing room in uh, Prime Hunters that I really love. It's good fun. Work your way through, and then be a little careful because I think you can like easily fling yourself out the other side once this room loads. Yeah, you can really easily just go whoosh. Uh, but note that there's a grapple beam. And another missile, just for your efforts. Uh, also, yes, this is uh, back to the uh, very beginning room of the Chozo Ruins. All the way here. Now the reason why I like coming here all the way now, even though I guess you could come here a bit later, or a bit earlier rather, you can, you can come here as late as you want, to be honest. There's a, uh, back in the uh, room with the Morph Ball, the second item in the game, I just want to remind you, is that the Chozo Ghosts are really going to have no chill. So, first of all, break open this wall. And there's a, there's a missile chilling right there. I hope you don't mind me getting more missiles. These guys are... I'm going to completely ignore these guys. I'm going to see how easy it is to just... Ignore these. Up here on this side, there's another missile. There's so many missiles. I can't see where I'm going in this room, but I hope you can tell. Drop down here. Ramp over here. Hold down the spider ball because this catches everyone off guard when they first go through here. And then don't get hit by a Chozo projectile. There we go. I'm too lazy, man. The Chozo Ghosts, they're just chilling. They're in the way. Now this one, I guess, depending on how many missiles you've actually been picking up, this is either easy or kind of annoying. But fortunately, uh, I've got 139, so this shouldn't be too bad. But this does peeve off some people. So, all of these structures around you are made out of, well, this dangerous seriously collapsing, but they're actually only susceptible to super missiles. And there's four of them. So, you gotta burn 20 ammo, and you gotta also be able to partially aim up. Which is, you know, a little bit spooky, but don't worry, it's not too bad. Because there's this platform that I'm looking at, and it's a little too high up, so once you break all of them, the whole platform drops down just a little bit. Which also kind of shatters the next level, which kind of hints, yeah, by 20 ammo I meant 60. This is a big filter. Uh, there's also this fun enemy, which I don't think even really appears anything anywhere else. This is an Oculus, a wall crawler that generates electric pulses. The Oculus exposes its single eye when active. The electrical field that covers it is enough to deter most predators. If the Oculus detects anything capable of presenting a real threat, it retracts into its impermeable shell. This is a big meme. Uh, this enemy uh, literally blocks super missiles. It is invented just to suck in and block super missiles. So if you do that, bit, bit of an ouch. Uh, fortunately, they're only on two of these walls. Unfortunately, you know, kind of annoying, but that's okay. You can get past them, no issue. I think also they might drop more missiles just in case. Uh, same deal, yet again. Now there's uh, one on each side, so uh, yeah. Once more for the crowd. Oops. This is why I've got 170 missiles. Because I don't trust myself. Breaking all that all the way. Uh, note how there's these enemies. These are uh, everyone's favorite. Plated puffers. Mutated puffers with reinforced epidermis. Phase on exposure has created a mutant strain of puffers on Talon 4. They have developed plated skin, making them harder to burst. Concussive weapons can still do the job, however. The gas within the plated puffers is just as deadly as that within their cousins. They love the word cousins, don't they? But yeah, they're puffers that can be only destroyed with uh, missiles. Or maybe super missiles. Or they just ran into something. But check out what is at the top here. This is the Wave Buster. This is a powerful beam attack, but note how you can hold A to charge and then press Y to fire and hold A for continuous fire. So if I'm chilling down here with... Yeah, no, they all died. It's not really a great enemy to use it on in this room, but effectively, if the super missile is like the beam combo, also uh, note this fun little path here if you've got the gravity suit, which is why you come down here. Look at that, it's another, another artifact. 
That's two out of twelve. This is the artifact of Life Giver, the fifth of twelve. Oh, well, yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> now I saw this stream with thirty-five percent of the items. I'm at sixty-four. So mm, we'll see how we go with, with two streams again. I'm at an hour forty-six. This is kind of the point where I start need to. I need to start going, hmm, do I call it? Because I'm thinking, like, there is a bit left. There's also not, like, you know... We're starting to get to that point where... Um... You know, I'm clearing off rooms. Pretty much every room I've been going through, like, it's not like either of the... You know, four remaining items give me, you know, an ability to go through that I hadn't had before. Once you get the X-Ray... Visor and uh, the ice. Maybe not the ice beam. There's a lot of doors are locked by the ice beam, but press. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Like, how short would the next stream be? Because I'm thinking, like, if I call it now, the next stream would probably be about like this length tops. So I'm thinking, do I just go for it? Do I pull the Tomb Raider two? Because uh, yeah, I've got um, seven more blips of things to pick up. Uh, two of them are literally, like, the end of the game stuff, and one is a, I'm not gonna clear the Fendrana Drifts unless I mark it as a blip. Um, oh, look. Oh, no. it, it can't do without enough power bomb. So, and that's still not all, all of the, the, um, the Chozo Ruins done, but I think now is, like, the best time to just kind of go through, quickly grab like that kind of stuff because that's a real convenient trek from the X-ray visor all the way to the wave buster. And yeah, the first yeah the first stream just like passed three hours by a little bit, which I think I've only ever done three streams that passed three hours. But the Tomb Raider two one is the only one that's passed three and a half. I know that one on top. Of it. So doing two longer than normal streams. Yeah, maybe. I don't want to do more than like two hours. Like two hours is my kind of sweet spot. I, the original intention for my streams was actually like going to be an hour and a half. Um, like the first couple were like less than two hours, but then I kind of was like, two hours feels like a good number. Um, and I guess when I was doing Let's Play content, um, before I kind of stopped, two hours was kind of the point that I was kind of sitting at, except the problem was I was juggling two games at once, which I feel like is not the most fun. I think doing one at a time leads to a bit more consistency, so... Anyway, uh, come on left. This room, uh, I'm, I think, I think we gotta do the spider ball track this time. Um, but I think the thing that you might be surprised about is how quickly I will pick up the remaining stuff. Because, like, you know, we've got a lot of, a lot of the goodies already, and, uh, if you know what's ahead, which I also love how you can now use the grapple beam to kind of, like, quickly go through some other areas, like this one, it's like, oh yeah, well, why go through all the hassle and jump around with the puffers when you can just swing past them, you know? This guy is still dead, after so much time. Okay, now, this room, I find this room's kind of interesting because those enemies from before just don't exist. This is the kind of, well, one, this isn't even to hint at anything. It's to just tell you that you're an idiot and you could have jumped over them. <laughs> you didn't even need to take them out. But hop up here because uh, I think now that I've got the grapple beam, this is what unlocks this area. Not really the x-ray beam that lets you go here, but... So go up here, spin these little ledges, and you'll pop out when you're done. This will point you also into the, I guess, direction. Maybe it points you in the direction you have to go to. Uh, you'll raise these little screw things, which is pretty cool. And you'll use the platform that you raised in order to jump to the next one, which is pretty cool. And yes, there is an uh, alluring spider ball track, but raise the last one just a little bit. And this this room blew my mind as a young laddie. Uh, oh, yeah, the spider ball track. Let's use the spider ball track to hop up on top. Jump up to the very highest one, and here we have a bomb slot, which 
makes you go, oh no. <laughs> this massive maze of stuff pops out. First of all, big, big thing. <laughs> Look out. You've got a power bomb because you can see it right there in the background. You're going to need one right at the end. So if you don't have a power bomb, just, just don't, don't try this. Go back, go, go get a power bomb. You gotta drop down. This is the most gnarly bit of spider ball goodness. And I love it so much. You hop around on all these tracks. You gotta let go of the spider ball. Pick up back on. You can hold it ahead of time. So you don't have to time it exactly. But you're, you're bombing off bits. You're bouncing off stuff. You get these bits, which is like, you know, even... You, you can go in any direction while you're on this wall. It's very... I guess here's the thing. Remember that the spider ball was in Metroid 2. It was in the Game Boy 1. The way you say this, did you have... To, um, I have. I have done this without a, a power bomb as a kid, and it made me very sad when I got to the end. There are so many places. Oh, oh, oh. There were so many places I got to, and then I was like, oh, you need a power bomb. I love how it's like you could drop down, but why? <laughs> why would you drop down when you could just do this? I love this massive just. <laughs> it's so fun! Oh my gosh, I love these. Oh, dude, I love this game. I love this game so much. And the worst part is that I I don't have the same just like childish wonder that I do with the sequ sorry, with the sequels that I do with this one. I think you might have seen it with the Toy Story 2 game. If you go back for that one, I definitely did enjoy myself with that one, but uh, even games like Mario Galaxy 2, it's like you kinda work your way to get through that one. But this is just like oh, oh I love it. Oh. Anyways, right at the end of all that, your reward is clearly the greatest thing in the game, which is the plasma beam. Samus' gun has gone wide, it has gone uh, up, and now it has gone long. The plasma beam is the ultimate weapon in the game. It lets you open these red doors, but also, unlike the ice beam, look how fast it goes. And it does a lot of damage as well, so... It's such a treat, the plasma beam. It's a, it's a grand reward for clearing all of this. I think I gotta go this way, actually. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Whereas, like, Metro Prime, it's like... You've got to find a good point to, like, stop a stream. I feel like getting the ice beam was, like, a like, right on the money. Oh, you can use the, the, the only thing about the plasma beam is going over the doors. Um, yeah, the Nintendo Directs happen so this is what i love as well you get the plasma beam and the first thing you get you do is you just vaporize you just annihilate these guys these guys have no issue anymore oh it's such a good feeling so no sweat working through anything in the game now that you got the plasma beam um if you're going for the non-optional collectibles mario on switch though game Boy. true oh i forgot to mention yeah <laughs> sorry before <laughs> before i played uh this game the stream before was Wario Land 3, for people who weren't in the know. I'm gonna hit the save while I'm at it. You know, I don't really have to. Might as well. Um, yeah, Metroid, exact, exactly. The progression is so right. Like, with this plasma beam... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go through a few sentences. With this plasma beam, there's one item left for you in the game, and then you can just rush to the end of the game, given that you picked up all the artifacts on the way. Um, but, like, yeah, you get this plasma beam, but, like, you are right near the end of the game. Um, and this is, yeah, you're right, this is why the backtracking exists. Because this makes you go, wow, look how awesome you are now that you have all these goodies. So now, you'll be pleased to know I am going through this door, finally. And, uh, this is my path to clear Fendrana Drift's, uh, bit. I have a whole blip that's just aimed around going through everywhere in the Fendrana Drift's. And then... Backing up, so there's a little she got here now, instead of the big rock monster. This is a fun bit, after you get the grapple beam, you can go through this little tube, and, uh... Look at that! Invisible! Special on plasma beam and stuff really makes you feel... Exactly! Uh... The, the phase on beam's kind of right very, 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 very end. Research on Talonform is exploring a new area, pending stabilization of the Thardis venture. We will expand in animation research to include other native for materials. Oh no, they're gonna turn the zoomer into a boss! Taming of Thardis continues, barring unforeseen setbacks. It can be installed on Phazon Mine, patrolled by Lotus Milestone. I love how th they were going to put this somewhere else, and they were like, eh, it's called. Just keep it chilling here. Um, 
Now there's a long spider ball track that leads around to that elevator if uh, you ever wanted to actually exit via that elevator for some reason. But I don't feel like that's that necessary, so... So yeah, so there's a few goodies to pick up all around the Fendrana Drifts, and I have held off trying to go back to the Fendrana Drifts. Oh no, enemies in the way. Just annihilate them, plasma beam. <laughs> I love it. I'm a child. I love it. Which also it makes a lot of sense going through the uh, the hot area while you've got the I'm oh, sorry, the cold area while you've got the, the plasma beam, doesn't it? Now this is one thing I love as well. There's a couple places where there's a little just ice and just shoot it. There you go. There's a uh, power bomb expansion just sitting here. Sure. Okay. You know, as you do. Also, I love how there's a little big she off here now. Which, look how quick you can take it out with this. He's, he's dead already. That was a boss. That was a boss you had to fight with just the power beam. And now it's like, oh. So good. These enemies, bro, hit him in the- Okay, you can't hit him in the face. Apparently they are weak to the face, but I have just melted a child. You don't even have to take him out. I'm just doing it for sport now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, oh, it's so good fun. So, anyways, uh, hop down here. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, it was on the back of this one. There's a bit more ice here. This one melts instead of shatters, but sure, okay. Pick up a missile. Exactly, exactly. This is this is exactly how you do it. The only thing I guess you could say is uh, maybe the game isn't as hard as maybe you know it was when you started, when your health was literally ten times less. And to some degree, I feel like yeah, maybe, but it's also a very optional. Uh, like yeah, you, you gotta get the, the platinum beam in the end, but you. I think you can beat the game with only maybe like two. Actually, you can probably actively avoid the power tanks, so. Super missile, this wall, and uh, it's it's Cordite, and you can scan this, which uh, raises a wall. I guess. Uh, would you look at that? A little missile at the top of the top of the hill. Top of the tower. Tip top of the tower. I gotta... Unfortunately, I think these guys are all only weak to the wave beam, and I am too much of a coward to use the wave beam, so... Back in this room... I also love how... Just... This is the thing I love. The enemies change once returning with much later stuff. Like, these bombers were... And these are not just regular old bombers, by the way. These are... Very invisible bombers. They are visible with the... X-ray visor. Oh, no, those ones are visible. There are invisible ones somewhere. Or maybe it's the sequel. So, anyways, uh, you might have noticed this guy's hands are cold. Hit it with a plasma beam. His hands are now glowy because you made them on fire. Oops. There we go. Jump in his hands as a ball. I guess. And uh, that causes uh, construction construction to break. I guess. But look at here. There's another artifact. This is the artifact of the sun. You literally go into the Sun Tower somewhere later on and you don't get the Artifact of Sun in it, which I think is kind of curious, but sure, okay. Uh, for reference, I think both, the Artifacts are counting as both a logbook scan and an item because it's a thing to pick up, but it's also like, it uh, unlocks the actual scan of what you required in order to pick it up. So, that's all I needed, I don't need to go all the way, but... This is why you go into the Fajrana Drifts up to get the plasma there, because there's so many things. Like, I've already used it in three places, so... I don't think you can do the jumps across there quite yet, but... Or quite ever, really. So I guess the kind of real fun thing is that, like, yeah, I guess a lot of this game's items and kinds of abilities... Uh, 
I didn't go- I've never gone into the, um, hold on, I'll just throw it off. I've never gone into the, uh, impact crater yet. There's the world so far. I, I've just still got that door un- untouched. I was just chilling there. But you don't have to, like, the, well, I mean, you have to go there in the very, very end. But, like, the scans you get for getting the hints to the artifacts, you actually get when you pick up the artifacts themselves. This guy is going to be an absolute pain if I let him live. I love that that's just it. Oh, such a great feeling. Mwah. Mwah. Delicious. So you're hearing the, the wonderful sounds of, uh... Where is it off the top of my head? Definitely hearing one here. <laughs> Try- Oh my gosh, my brain's going, yeah, do you remember where the stuff was in this room? Is a spider- oh, duh. <laughs> I'd probably just turn around right past that. Just was like, I don't know. Well, you know, not a missile. I'm gonna get tired of saying, look, it's a missile. Uh, but yeah. What did you say about the missile? Uh, also, I think sneakily hidden down here is a missile. Oh boy. It makes you feel that there's only 11 left in the game. I, I started the stream, like, just two hours ago. Yeah, Eleven more times, yeah. I started the stream just... Oh, I don't miss the man. Uh, but this is what I mean, like, you get the items super fast now that you've got all the goodies and you're just clearing out the areas. So, I think that's everything, um, relating to, like, this half. So now I just need to wander south again. Let's see if I can get past this guy without him pestering me. Remember, you had to go through this area once you got the space jump boots, so... Although, I guess this is the slack type there. I don't need to pop that one. Ouch. There we go. I always get thrown off by this jump sometimes, by that she goth. He's just... Oh, he gets in the way sometimes. Almost there, don't worry. I love how it's like, you know, you, you can see it right there. Get, get rid of these fellas. Don't need- oh. I love as well, they're on fire, they're taking damage over time as well. Like this, the- and I like this as well, the ice beam freezes them, allowing them to be shattered by the missile. The, uh, wave beam sometimes electrocutes them if they've got electrical systems. And the, uh, the plasma beam just kills them. It was good fun, so. So now I'm going back through these wonderful chambers, which you know they're going to be pitch black. Kind of weirdly, I've picked up almost everything in here. Like, there's... You're going to just watch me wander through a bunch of rooms and be like, oh, I, I got all the stuff in here the first time. You don't really need to actually backtrack through all of this, but it's just easier than... You gotta, you gotta end up halfway, so it's just like, hey, you might as well just go through this way, just wandering around. So anyway, this is gonna be dark. You might be wondering what this room looks like with the x-ray visor, and the answer is not easily. Like, you can tell what's going on, and uh, these guys are still invisible. Did I say invisible? I meant visible. I don't know, pick your poison, what's easier? I think the x-ray visor actually makes it easy to see what it's like, actually like, tangible. And yes, even those things are weak to the plasma beam. They're not gonna let me live, are they? I'm not gonna let them live, apparently. So, anyway, long trek, long trek to get to this room, which I can now ignore the space pirates down below, just keep jumping. 
They can't see me. I'm jumping. This is my vibe. This is my group. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. This room always feels like uh, it was maybe going to have to grapple beam in it, but uh, no, I ended up being the super missile. <laughs> Dark room. It's all good. And uh, finally, up to this top deck. Uh, it's a long trek, but it's a necessary trek. Because uh, for some odd reason, uh, one of the things is up here. So let's first like, take out the space pirates that are flying around. Now, once you head up into this tower in particular, you can tell it's this tower because the other one uh, was the other tower. Actually, I think it is the... No, it, it, it's this one. You got these big boxes in the way. And then uh, once you get over here, I'm pretty sure you got to use the... Uh, hold on, what did they say? There's a large fuel cell attached to the base of this tower. Energy readings to take rapid <laughs> fluctuations power levels. The radion-based outer casing of the structure appears damaged and unstable. Radion is... That. Maybe you're going to come here sooner, but I think I just... You know, there's no at the time that just I'm clearing out everything. Especially if it's just for an artifact. Spoilers, it's an artifact. Uh, look at this camera vignetting that just happens. It's the only time it ever happens, I swear. Uh, but yeah, no, big tower just crashes down, you know, as you do. While they hit the pentagon. And look at this. Chozo artifact acquired. This is the artifact of Elder, the third of 12, or the fourth of what I picked up. But this is already four. This is making me feel confident that... You know, I could just kind of snag all this. This is, weirdly, the longest morph ball jump. I don't know why it's, it feels just longer than I expect. Uh, which direction? This direction. So yeah, just another, just another artifact, but it's like, you, know, you gotta come back here, so might as well. Uh, all right, nearly out the other side of the, the base. What time in the last stream did I come into here? I feel like it was right at two hours, because I remember oh, I can't even see anything. I feel like it was right at two hours, because I remember like coming back out and then going Where do I go after that? No, it would have been earlier. It would have been earlier than two hours, maybe. Oh my gosh, they really love these guys, don't they? So do I apparently. Anyways, right here, finally, fine, finally, come on, come on, you gotta decide now. I think I'm gonna commit, I'm gonna commit. So finally, there's an ice beam door at the bottom of the bit with the thermal visor. Open the ice beam door and you can finally see, uh, and then all this does is it leads you back to this room with the, uh, Basically on the way to get in the gravity suit, so let's go back through here now with all the goodies. This is kind of fun, backtracking to where I was like an hour and a half ago. Gimmer items remaining uh, second half of the first one. Yeah, exactly. It's it's basically that. Now there is like a couple of areas to still pick up stuff in, but it's along the way with like, well, like most of the, the Chozo ruins is done, the Talon Overall is basically done. Uh, the Fendrana Drifts is almost done. Um, so here's the thing, I believe you use this guy and you actually want to hop over to this ledge. Finally I will... Come on. I feel like he's too close right now. Oh no, it's alright. Use him to hop over here and this gives you nice vantage to... Uh, there you go, there's a slag, slagmite all the way up there. Unfortunately, I dodged the guy. And this breaks a wonderful hole in the ice. You think the ice would like freeze over? I don't know how ice works. But hop down in here and morph ball your way over. Missile expansion number 40. Big 40. And also you're in the water, but the game's kind of like, well, if you got the grapple beam, you probably got the you know, gravity suit, so it's all fine. And then people with randomizers be like, oh no. That one is your doing, unless they put a major item down there. In which case, that is not your doing. 
Um, so yeah, this is actually the uh, the exit right here. Yep, this is the exit. This wonderful tunnel yet again. Yeah, I'm feeling confident that I could probably do this in not at three hours, but listen, I'm hoping I can beat it before uh, Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider Lane. But we'll see. So this room is actually kind of funky because uh, there's two little goodies. You saw that there were um, the uh, the grapple beam spots high above, uh, which you can actually use here. This lets you go all the way over on this side of the room. Yeah, a randomizer run would be pretty neat. So, how about this wall? I don't know why, it's just whatever, but... This is one of very few plasma beam doors. Look at this. Fun lore. Drill rig operators are to report any symptoms of phase on madness immediately. Orpheum crash site is an orange level security zone. The final transmissions from the Orpheum point to a massive security breach. All personnel must inspect their life support systems before reporting to the mice. That makes it kind of weird. It's like they didn't even report that Samus was there. Or at least they just said security breach? I don't know. This is another Chozo artifact. This is the fifth one or the eleventh one why they numbered them. It's like you're gonna be getting them in a very weird order so <laughs> why number them in game? Maybe it's to make lists easier but uh before you hop down look at that there's another one of these guys. He's chilling, he's going around. They need more of them. Go through here and another another powerbomb expansion. I thought you wouldn't ask. So I think this puts me at 6, which I don't know if that's the last one, or maybe there's one more. Phase on Vein, Omicron has the highest yield per cubic meter of all evac uh, excavation sites. Not evacuation sites, maybe not yet. Impact core is estimated to be 800 meters from termination point of Phase on Vein, Omicron. Drones reporting for mine duty must check in at the control tower for debriefing. It's like they, they say that as like you gotta program the drones to do that, so... Uh, anyways, let's hop in... I think I'm on the underside. Yeah, I'm on the underside this time. Into the water. Oh, come on, keep going. Into the water. And I lost my I lost my UI. Whoops. Because yeah, this is I was expecting um like my clear out the Fendrana dry uh oh my gosh, I can speak. Clear out the Fendrana rifts section. Oh, oh, he shot me! No, that's what I get for being impatient. But uh, I was expecting uh, my part for you know clearing the Fendrana drift to really take a long while. But I don't know. Like this has been fairly smooth go through. Because when you think about it as well, like uh, there we go. Ugh. I like how with the grapple beam you can just go up here. You don't even have to go. Actually. I was going to say, you don't have to go to the room with the uh, gravity suit, except I yeah, guess what I'm about to find there. Oops. Look at that, look at that, it's just right there. So, uh, I think, yeah, shooting that with the uh, plasma beam reveals a wonderful swinging point, and, uh, Take another shot. Here's another missile expansion. Well, yep, now I can go back through this room in no sweat. <laughs> so that's all good. But yeah, like, I, d I, didn't, I didn't check what time... Nine more, yeah, exactly. Nine more. I didn't check what time I went into the Fendrana Drifts, but this was... Yeah, my whole section for just clearing out the Fendrana Drifts. There was nothing more in the Fendrana Drifts. Uh, that I haven't picked up. Uh, bar one item, but it's, it's on the way, trust me. There we go. So now we're back at the bottom of this room. I gotta work my way right back to the very, very top. And again. Get rid of more of these guys. Climbing. I guess you've already seen me climb this room before, haven't you? 
This is kind of fun though, and I, I guess I haven't mentioned the platforming in a long while, but it's like, it just kind of happens. Like at some point the controls just mesh with you, and you're just constantly like, going, Oh yeah, I'm just landing these jumps, like, it feels weird, you know? Like, at the time even, platforming in first person games was kind of a bit frowned upon. You had games like Jumping Flash take excessive strides to making you feel as comfortable as possible when jumping, and here it's just like, you know, you, you look at a jump, you just go for it, and you'll make it, probably. Here we go, finally. After all that, here's the energy tank that was frozen today. And you can break out of the other side too. And that is every item in the Fendrana Drifts. And very conveniently, right back at the elevator that I said I was going to start at. So, well, that I started this whole bit to, to go through with. So, that's good fun. That's, that's nice that you can just snag all of that. Anything on the way? I feel like. Oh no, no, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, I was like, did I say anything? One more tank. It looks like two to me. I've got twelve. I keep forgetting if there's thirteen or fourteen in this game, but I've always thought there were thirteen. Now there's fourteen in Prime Three, and that's what's really throws me off. I don't know, there I might be. Well, I, no, I'm sorry. I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully I've counted this right. But... Yeah, so I was just noting my head. I was like, did I manage to pick up all the things that I wanted to pick up? And I think the answer is yes. So. So now, wandering back through a bit of the Magmore Caverns, because uh, I don't think I had a great time to pick up this item. I don't think I'd go on. I just, I just peered over. Uh, nice. I peered over to my map and go like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, there are 14. So, I guess two more energy tanks to get, nine more missiles, and uh, your guess is as good as mine how many power bombs there are, but I know I can hold six right now. I think there's one more. I want to say. So, anyway, here's the room with the elevator. I'm just going to skip past this. I haven't been over here in, like, ages. There's this guy who's just chilling there. I have just decided that the lava is my home. Uh, this room is always good fun because I have never seen to abide by any of it, but you can actually grapple beam across it. They put in a legitimate means to crossing this room without having to do the, um, you know, any of the knocks. Which I always love. I love how they, they really feel like, you know, they want you to get through these areas quick because they're backtracking. Now, with the power bomb, power bomb right here, just this one random room. And you think, oh, missile, right? No, very weirdly, this is actually the beam combo for the ice beam. It's just here. It's, it's the ice spreader. So, in the same way as the wave buster, which I have still not used, by the way, I'll find, I, I will use it, don't worry. Go, on, go back to the uh, phase on mines, there's gonna be more of those space pirates. Uh, but, I don't know, I always thought the wave buster is, is like, at least, you had to work for that. But the, uh, there's no turrets in this room, which I feel like makes this room a lot easier to work with. It's just a few dudes, like, oh, okay. You can even do some fun double jumps to just land on this ledge immediately. Uh, you can actually get this as soon as you get the double, the space jump, I believe. But again, it's like, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna have the power bomb to get all the way further back. So, note up here, there's a classical suspension bridge, but you require power. So, okay. Bit of a spin, and there you go. And I don't know if any of these boxes are going to give you a power bomb, but trust me, you're going to need another one. Well, I, I, I'm sitting pretty. I'm sitting pretty. I've got plenty. Where's the bus when you have the plasma beam? Exactly. The plasma beam is too good, and I think the only reason why you'd really want to use them is for anything beam-specific, which is why 
when it's on the, you know, the face on mines again and you got to deal with more space pirates again. Um, anyway, just work your way around here and there is just a treasure artifact sitting here. This could potentially be one of the earliest ones you pick up. Because uh, it is just sitting here. This is the artifact of strength, the second of twelve. Uh, but anyway, go down here, use a power bomb, and that uh, breaks open a thing which opens a hole, which uh, puts you in a little tiny room. And the little tiny room has another power bomb expansion. I think that actually might be the last one, right there. So that will boost me up to seven capacity, which is plenty. Seven is a plain number. It's the original game. Uh, not the original, but Super Metroid, you'd get lots of power bombs. I also love how this puts you back in this room, like, across. So, uh, my drawing for, like, where you gotta go, it's like, oh, I gotta go back to this room again. Which they fixed. Since I was last year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very interesting, but sure. And these guys also return, but, uh... Well, <laughs> briefly. Brief venture. Couple of puffers, bouncing along. Uh, so yeah, I am now on the fourth last blip on my map, which still might be a little bit, but we'll see. Well, these guys are gonna pest me, so let's get rid of them. Pull out your x-ray visor, because this one is a cheeky one that I swear has absolutely nothing hinting at what you gotta do. But you'll see there's a platform just casually there. Or is it? Is that platform actually going to move around or no? Ah, oh, here we go. Ah. But yeah, for reference, this is uh, right back at the kind of first entry of where this room was. And all the way on the right are all these boxes just kind of hinting at something being here. A bunch of platforms that are for some other reason maybe these are the same platforms that are only visible via the x-ray beam uh hit it with a missile just a regular old missile don't have to be super this time count them down there's eight more <laughs> that's pretty cool though i forgot how many chozo artifacts i've picked up I picked up six haven't i Oh, I love this room. This is the room with the triclops, but you can just space jump over this. This is the first time I've been to this room. So, well, yeah, just jump over. Eight more. Eight more, yeah. Well, not artifacts, it's eight more missiles. Um, so now, this is a kind of neat thing. Um, not a... well... Neat is subjective, I guess. Uh, oh, no, no, I got these things in the way. But, uh, with the x-ray visor, you can actually spot uh, this ahead of time, which I always love, is it, that uh, the hints you get, by the way, uh, for all of these artifacts, you only get told the name of the room that they're in, and maybe a hint of kind of like, in the description, the hot, like, this will be like the hot lava, or the hot lake, or something like that, and you just have to know this is the one room with lake in its name, so this is the artifacts of nature, the 8th of 12, which, I'm looking at this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this is 7, this is the 7th one of God. okay, so, okay, oh, Let's just, uh, get out of here. I think this is virtually all of the Magmore Caverns. I think I'll be leading through the Magmore Caverns, uh, just on my way out. But I think that's pretty much everything you can pick up in here. So, I'm definitely feeling good about that. Uh, and now I've just got to exit via the, uh... Unfortunate platforms that I skipped over ages ago. But granted, if you come down here with without the various suit and you run into that problem of like, you know, it's too hot, jumping back up here is not the most fun. I do love how, well, love, but, you know, on a first playthrough, this game does show you the struggles of like your lack of abilities. It definitely makes you take your time, especially when they put a save station at the bottom of this. That's very generous of them, isn't it? It's like you, you drop down this bit, the jumps are a bit annoying without the double jump, and then you save at the bottom. <laughs> so. Now, if you've been wondering why didn't you clear out all of the Chozo Ruin, or tr yeah, it's because you're conveniently here. This is just a real convenient spot to be. 
because now I can just turn this way and work my way up here. Except, you've got to now know how to get up in this room, because if you look up, there's one of these barriers in the way, and that's because there are two of these cordite walls. There's also a lot of wall wasps, which I shall proceed to ignore or blow up. Scan this. And we gotta activate another four runic symbols, just for, just for old time's sake. There's one there, one there. I'm pretty sure there's one on the back of one of these. Hold on, sorry, Mr. Warboss. Nope. Ah, there, there it is. Hold on, wait, wait. Very chill, Mr. Warboss. Uh, there's one more somewhere up there. was it? This is all mythical, there's no electronics associated. Okay, some war wasps are gonna die. I'm sorry, bros. Bonk, 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 bonk. Surprisingly, you can't destroy the hive without a missile. There you go. Okay, where was that last symbol? I feel like I'm going mad, because it's just like that one which I activated. I love how uh, there's a little thing for a ruined Warless Hive just to remind you. Uh, yeah, where is the last one? It's not like there's really anywhere else in this room, so... So on the entryway... It's not that one. That one's already activated. Why am I struggling to... Still along the bottom? I thought it was like along like the base of one of these pillars. Nope. Why why am I strunking out and trying to find this fourth symbol? It's not up above. Why? Where? What? Uh... Yeah, legit, why? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm... I'm so blind. I'm so blind. I swear. I swear. That's what 1057 does to me. But anyway, that's okay. <laughs> this isn't a speedrun. I'd be yelling if this was a speedrun. I'd be like, oh my god, you just broke my run like that. Look at these guys. They returned. Also, I love how you break the platforms you're on when you bomb off them, so you gotta get this jump kinda right, but it's not too bad. I love how this is also just to get back up to, you know, <laughs> this room. There's a, there's a thing we haven't seen in an hour. I also love how, uh, since you can space jump, you can kind of get over this jump. So back to uh, this room with Flagra, and you got to deal with more Chozo guys. There's three of them this time. There's been some rooms where there's been two. There's been some rooms where there's three. Wait for them a bit, and back to the whole super missile charge shot. That seems to be my strat right now. Just super missile charge shot. It gets through them the quickest. Only thing is, while using the X-ray visor, you don't get. Uh, no, you can't hit him with the plasma beam. You can try. Hold on, let me just briefly demonstrate. Once the plasma beam comes back, you can briefly try. The plasma beam shots all go through, so you have to hit him with the power beam. Something. Maybe there's something about it being the original weapon, and these are like ghosts. Maybe there's something associated with that, or it's like pure energy, whereas like the plasma beam is heat and not pure energy. Anyway, I guess. Being back in this room and just taking out the ghosts reveals an artifact. They they were just hogging hogging this artifact from you. And they put it on the flower just to just to make you jump on it. But okay. I'll accept it. Chozo Artifact Acquired. This is the artifact of the wild, the fourth of twelve, or the eighth one that I've picked up. Here's a fun fact I'll let you know right away. Uh, one of them is literally in the first area. Like, sorry, as in... I uh, still don't get what you need to... Uh, 
You only needed to fight them while they're invisible, because they're they're invisible half the time. Like they 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 do an attack, they're visible, and then they're oh yeah for, for gameplay like why? Because of I don't know the ghosts. Excellent. We need experts to see ghosts. Is that, do you actually? Does that even work? Does that work in real life? Can you actually use x-rays to see ghosts? There was a UFO sighting, like, the other day, and I don't even know. I, don't, I haven't even read the details about it, but it's like, oh boy, are we going on about UFOs? Uh, I think I actually need to go down the other... Yeah, I need to go down this way, sorry. This is not invisible all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, like, why, why did the energy shots only hit them? when you can see them, that is true. It makes sense why you can't lock onto them, but I mean, the shad- the, yeah, the shadow troopers let you hit them while they're invisible. So why do the ghosts not let you hit them when they're invisible? Maybe they can, and I'm just bad at aiming. UFO is an unidentified flying object, doesn't have to be alien. Probably is China. It could be. I, the balloon thing, like, I don't know, is this, is this topical? But the balloon thing is hilarious to me because it's like, a lot of people are just like wanting to shoot down everything that's flying over them now. It's like, oh my goodness. A lot of people with weather balloons are just like, oh no. So back through this room. One last time. That, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of vectors to China. Um, there's a degree of like, I'm always torn because it's like, I think there's a degree of like, you know, free and open internet and then there's also like, yeah, but like when China is specifically invading the in Invading? That sounds like a harsh word, but like, you know, internet gets manipulated, which isn't universally China, I'll just note that as well. But it's like, yeah, there's an entire, you know, gang of, I guess both really. Both Western and Oriental, something like the right word. Something like that's a good Um. I think I just heard another one. Uh, but it's like, whole point is that, like, there's a lot of internet use for misinformation. Amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of, like, a lot of spyware um, used by actual organizations. Um, and it's like. There's not a lot of, like, backlash for governments doing stuff really encroaching. If it's other governments on you, like, oh, you know, we jump on that immediately. If it's your government on you, that's uh, fine, man. But, yeah. So, now we're back in this room, you might notice, oh, look at that, you've got the other beams now, so you can do this. And I actively kind of went past this room when I had the ice beam earlier, just because I'm like, well, I'm gonna come back with a plasma beam, so. Uh, hit the ice beam slot. Guys in the CIA and other intelligence officers must have regular wet dreams matching themselves being. Um, oh, exactly, exactly. Although, granted, Facebook. Facebook's surprisingly okay, although it doesn't get into, into uh, China, unfortunately, but it does get into a lot of the rest of the world. So, uh, going down here with the ice beam, look at that, it's another energy tank. Not to mention the cancer to- oh jeez, yeah. I always feel like it's weird because TikTok gets exclusively, like, a lot of flack. But I feel like I say that just as a person who doesn't use TikTok. And also, there's a lot of, like, weird social manipulation on TikTok that I don't see on other platforms. There was a bit on Vine. Back in the day. I'm- um, oh. US is a capitalist state. Yeah, yeah, I think there's like the ulterior motive of just like money, which inevitably leads to power. At, like, well, power leads to money. Maybe there's that. But some people are in it for the influence aspect. And so it doesn't matter that you're under capitalism. There are unfortunately some uh, crazy. Uh... I love how you use the plasma beam, by the way, to reveal this, and then you need to use the ice cream to get in it. But uh, look at this. It's another artifact. It's just chilling here. But, uh, yeah, that's unfortunately, like, figures in power who are just, like... Also, would you look at that? The tenth one was the ninth one. Oh, whoops. Uh, there's unfortunately figures in power who are there to provide, you know, strong influence on 
sometimes the world, like actually they want to strong arm other countries. They want to, you know, they believe that this, ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like that is weirdly, like that's, that's what, how you write a villain. And yet it's like, there are people out there who it's like, they don't care how much money they're making. And they don't particularly like, I mean, they want their country to do the best, but it's like that level of strong patriotism. Yeah, I love the idea of like having several beams to just like bounce between, and especially like the fun little bits that you get to use, even though, yeah, the plasma beam does get a lot of love. Um, so here we go, we're finally going back down here because I think I'm done. I think I'm like, yeah, that's, that's all the Chozo ruins. The Talon Overworld, there's like a couple of things I will pick up basically on the way out, but... 2 hours 36, I'm totally going to be dragging this close to the Tomb Raider. I think, I think I can do it faster than the Tomb Raider though. Tomb Raider definitely passed 3 hours 30. So I have less than an hour to go. But I think I'm good, because now I'm on my way. So back in this room, going down. The only thing I wish is that I'm still at 87% logbook, and I know there's a bunch of scans relating to the, you know, the last areas of the speedrun strats. Oh, exactly, yeah. Dude, if I, if I really wanted to do speedrun strats, I'd do the, um, the, the scan visor jump to get the space jump boots early and start sequence breaking, like, the first half of the game. That does save you so much time, that sequence break. That's, that's a crazy sequence break. Uh, also, yeah, if I miss scans, I'm just gonna, like, I'll just do a bonus video sometime later. I'm not gonna, like, tear my, tear my, uh, soul from my being to try and go back and get the, figure out what scans I was missing. But I'm decently certain I've been picking up all of them. I'm decently certain. Three hours, 37, yeah. I, I just remember that one, because that was the only stream I've done where, it, like, you know, I start the streams at 8.30 p.m., so three hours, 37 meant it... I have 59 minutes left. 50. No, this is like 54. I'm already at 11 or 6, so... Anyway, come in this room. Watch out, there's a bomb. I, I always stand next to the bomb. Seven more vessels. Cool. <laughs> uh, turn myself around. Did the power one really take out the, um... Turns it did, wow. Twitch timer says the Twitch timer says the stream's been going for two three. The the Twitch timer is correct, but uh, it's fifty two minutes. Ahead, but I started two minutes ahead of time. So oh, I'm an idiot. Hold on, wave buster. Here you go. It definitely takes him out, but it feels like it does take more missiles than it should. Because like hold on, I'm at one twenty six. It takes ten missiles to start it, and then like. About 12 to take him out. It, and yeah, it doesn't feel like it's, it's faster, so... I don't know, it, it, it does feel like it's a bit of a waste. That's a bit unfortunate. Look at that, they hit a turret up here. Which is unfortunate, because, yeah, the wave cluster should be cool. Now, the uh, ice spreader, on the other hand, it is a flat 10 damage, and it kills the guy. Sorry, 10 missiles, and it just kills him. But also, it's like, why don't you just do this? One missile, and you killed him. You had to charge up your shot anyways. So, uh... Yeah, out of three beam combos, the super missile is still the king. Which is a little unfortunate. And it's, it is kind of sad that, like, yeah. There's another Bendizium wall. Hope you appreciate me Bendiziuming all the walls. Partial security access achieved. Force field inactive. And there you go. It's kind of weird that they put a force fill in the way. Yeah, it's like the um the ice arrows in Ocarina of Time, if you ever use them. It's just like, yeah, they're there, but... I think they wanted them just to pad out the whole, like, control scheme, and, uh... Granted, Prime 2 kind of feels the same, the same way as well. I think it's just because the regular beam weapons do good enough, and you kind of have to go through the whole area with... without... you know, without the stuff anyway, so... So, they do a hard check just to make sure you've got the plasma beam, but check this out. This is 
the flamethrower. This is the fourth and final of the beam combos. Uh, the optional beam combos. Um, so same same rules, just it's for the plasma beam. Which also makes you go, isn't the plasma beam already too good? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. That's a very good point. It's kind of weird that it's like hidden here. Like you gotta go through this whole room of little space pirates just to, just to get it, but uh, that is, yeah, it's a bit of a balancing trap. It's like the regular weapons do well enough. Like, look at this. That guy usually takes like three charge shots from the, you know, from the wave beam. The ice beam feels super like on par with the wave beam, which I really like, and it's kind of like that in the um, original game as well, isn't it? Throw so, Super Metroid. So this guy has a Bendizium shell around his thing. Use a power bomb and uh, get angry. Welcome to a boss just out of nowhere. This is the Phazon Elite, an elite pirate infused with energized Phazon. The Phazon and charge elite pirates rely more on their wave quake generators, opting not to carry the vulnerable plasma artillery cannons normally used by elites. The direct fusing of Phazon into their bodies provides a tremendous level of energy. The drastically lower lifespan that comes with this process is of little concern to the pirate research team. This is a super duper fast version of the same enemy that I've been fighting before. Um, yeah, the cost is usually there, so that's why the ice beam, even though the shots do more damage, they're slower and it does, like, uh, I guess the charge time is the same for all weapons, but... And the nice thing about this guy is that even though, yeah, you can come back here with the power bomb, I think now is the best time to get this, because it's like, oh, I mean, we've got the plasma beam, so you get to do plasma beam damage, and then realize that even, even this guy is no, you know, no contest against the plasma beam. He drops a, an artifact? Let me just talk about how they hadn't gotten any access to these keys, and then it's just this guy clearly is holding on to this one key. But that's the tenth one. So that's very, very, uh, you know, exciting. Anyways, I think pretty much it's just a straight track to, you know, the last item of the game, pretty much. Because uh, the last spot, well, the eleventh artifact, is on the way. Oh no! You knock me down. You knock me down. Have I mentioned I love this game? I'm just gonna keep saying that. I love this game so much. All right, I'm gonna now drop down the middle. Watch how much health you lose by dropping down the middle. That was like. An energy tank and a half. It is less of an issue once you have 13 energy tanks. The nice thing about this room is that uh, this uh, yellow track is still permanent, so don't touch it after you've gotten this yellow track set up. It's not fun. It's just easier to ride up the yellow track and then drop down one floor. There we go. I feel like this area is like a bit tricky to navigate on the first playthrough as well because like the rooms start snaking into each other a fair bit. There we go. I don't think there's really anything I haven't yet picked up on the way as well. Like I feel like I've basically grabbed everything I've needed. So it's really just a trek back to where the power bombs were. Uh, every time. I love that. I, I just love that. I feel like there's just so many, like, fun little visual quirks. I'm never going down that path on the right, am I? I think I actually never do in the end. Well, we'll never see it. I mean, it's gotta be there, because it's just like, you know, kind of annoying if you can't leave the... Well, actually, I don't know, because it's like you get the power bomb and you kind of get that exit, which looks like, you know, because it gets to the very end of this place, which has an elevator back to the Talon Overworld. Or, no, back to the Magma Cabins. And it makes it look like, you know, you're supposed to go out that way, but really, you had to go back up and get the grapple beam. So, minus points game, you, you, you baited people into going the wrong way. 
Yet again. Come on, door. There we go. How long ago was it since uh, I fought against this guy? This guy, for some reason, doesn't even have a description. It's just... Or rather, this is the same description, I'm pretty sure. He doesn't have his cannon, though, I believe. No, he does. It's, it's back there. No, he doesn't. Yeah, no cannon. What's the scan on his back, then? Oh, it's his, it's his cell, which... Uh, yeah, okay. Interesting that you got one without the cannon. I guess because it's close quarters, that'd be really mean. This guy definitely is a close quarters boy, but again, plasma beam, no sweat. No sweat with the plasma beam. Anyway, I'm back in this room, which has... Uh, this room is ultra mean when you, like... If, especially if you save your game, like after picking up the power bomb, you just get greeted by four space pirates here. So if you have not been picking up many energy tanks... Actually, this one's on you. I don't know why. I used to always struggle with dealing with these four space pirates. Oh, look at that. Power bombs. So many power bombs. Have I actually got all the power bombs back? I think I'm still missing one, but... Uh, as in... Of my total capacity. I can't tell. The second game adds in a... You know, slash out of this, but... Anyways! <laughs> I'm not ending the stream here, because... Listen, we're, we're right out of the home stretch. So with the power bombs, and finally back where I got the power bombs, and with all the goodies, the plasma beam, the uh, grapple beam. That's pretty much it, that's all I really picked up since that. Use this, and away you go. This is a fun room because uh, you can duck down this little hidey hole here, and go through the underneath where all the turrets are still firing the heck out of you. Hide behind this wall, and you can disable them like that. You could blow them up, but I think it's fun disabling them. Got all these guys chilling. This is a bit of a fun room as well, because these guys don't know you're here, and then suddenly... Warning! Force field disengage. Metroid containment area will be breached! <laughs> you just disable all of them, they're like, oh no, someone hit the panel. Suspension of Synthetic Metroid rations have been ordered. Synthetic Metroid rations will be replaced by live bioenergy. Oh my gosh. Studies so indicate decreased aggression between elite pirates and irradiated Metroid. Science team believes the infusion of phase on these units may be forming a type of symbiosis between them, but the studies are underway. Infusion of phase on into local fungi is proceeding. This program has produced a cheap, viable ration for many of our phase on enhanced units in Talon 4. A mass production program has been authorized. Uh, fungal invigoration fluid processing normal. Okay, cool. Well, uh, yeah, no, the Space Pirates are currently taking, uh, taking a hit, we'll just say. Get him! Get him, my bros! Get him! Yeah! I love how you can kill the Metroids as well with a single hit, but I love how they properly do go for the Space Pirates. And then they do that weird thing where they grow and get bigger. And then they die immediately. So, okay. But yeah, so, uh, this is a bit of a kind of suck, good lucking room. Now you don't have random Metroids. Whoops. Now you don't have random Metroids chilling all over the place. Or you do, rather. But you also have these giant fungi. Did you bring the x ray visor? You're gonna enjoy going through this bit if you didn't bring it. There's something weird about all these just like floating platforms, you know? But you gotta watch out for the phase on here. The phase on will injure you like it's lava. I kind of hate how the Metroids, like, you know, just enter this pinball state, though. It's kind of like, I want to just take them out. There we go. So, use a power bomb here. This is a bit of a weird spot for a power bomb, but sure. And then, uh, uh kind of make you used to. How good is your ice beam against them? The ice, actually, the ice beam will be really good, because, um, you could freeze and then just missile them. Which means you skip the whole growing thing. So maybe I should be doing that. Also, isn't that kind of weird? It's like, yeah, the, 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 the on, where is it? There it is. The ice beam wins again. Exactly. You you are correct. That is that is the weakness. So missile counted off. Six more. I 
I always just instinctively keep using the plasma beam for everything, but it's like, eh, yeah, you can do better than that, so. Oh, is it? these are just regular old burrows, nothing weird about them. Now this is when we start getting into the, uh, ugh, kind of like, yeah, good luck with your beam weapons. I haven't used the flamethrower yet, we'll look at that in a moment. Also, the game is like, yep, just plasma beam doors, man. We know. So this is the bottom floor of the place, of the Phazon Mines. Uh, there's a few couple of things like, uh, yeah, this Phazon will hurt, but... They did put a missile right here, and I think it's a little easier to go pick it up now. But yeah, you can see how fast your health drains when you're standing in it, so... If, uh, anything Cough Cough requires you to go in it, Cough Cough, for a little longer than that, yeah, it's a bit, bit painful. Uh, check it out, by the way. These are the Hunter Metroids. You might have mentioned, seen them in the lore or, or in the logs earlier. Adolescent Metroid Energy Siphon Tentacle increases its threat level. As Metroids develop, they become more efficient predators, and Energy Draining Tentacle allows them to attack at a distance. Quick to anger, Hunter Metroid will charge troublesome prey and attempt to ram them into submission. Cold base attacks are still quite effective. Oh wow, I should really be keeping the, uh, the logs on that one. The only thing is that, like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get them from a the distance, but... Yeah, you're right. The, the same strat. These guys are real terrifying though when they see you, because they uh, they pounce and they like you know hook you in. They get you with their wire thing. You can see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you see what I mean? They just go at you. They're not all right, brother. Yeah. I think Metro Two was a super interesting game. I thought it was. Yeah, the different Metro types in that one was kind of interesting. Like I like the little boss metroids. It's just kind of annoying you had to fight so many of them though. That was my only catch. Um, good thing they put these uh, grapple beam guys in the... Uh, I feel like you really need to jump around here. I've, oh no! Um, but yeah, yeah, no, Metroid 2 is actually a really solid game. I... okay. This... I feel like I might have mentioned this, but just just to reiterate, the first Metroid game I just can't get into. I do just find it's kind of dull. I think I might have beaten it once, but it's like, oh, just navigating the rooms is so much work and effort. I don't think it's that enjoyable. Metroid 2 kind of removes that problem because Metroid 2 is broken down into fairly, you know, workable chunks. You don't have to take in these, like, massive, um, by the way, rip if you ran out of power bombs again. Um, this is a kind of weird room as well. You're hearing a sound. I can't get that. This is the one thing, you'll, you'll see, it's like, oh, look at that, lots of phase on. This is the one thing you need one more item to get. Okay. Also, you get a, uh, fun, dark room. Yeah, you're right about the, <laughs> the missiles. I should be just using that more. Hold on. There you go. So anyway, I believe you want to go down the low road when you get to the end here. I'm hearing it. I'm not seeing it. I don't know why. Yeah, okay. That's just a regular Morphle Bomb. Um, but yeah, no, Metroid 2 is actually a really solid game, and people who haven't played Metroid 2, because they think it's the, you know, it's the Game Boy Metroid and it's not in color and it's bad, it's legit alright. You'd actually, you'd, you'd find it's a great game. Um, now, Metroid Zero Mission deserves to exist. I haven't actually played it, but definitely, like, all the gripes I have with the, uh, original Metroid are not in Zero Mission, so I'm just gonna assume that game is, like, perfection. Um, check it out, by the way, just chilling behind here is a, uh, another missile recharge station. Like, one of two in the game. Yeah, Metroid 2 is, I mean, there's a lot of Metroids, but, like, it deserves it. It's a great game. Super Metroid, of course, everyone loves. Um, 
and rightly so, Super Metroid is great. And then, weirdly, yeah, the franchise lays so dormant that for an NES game, this is the... Uh, it's technically the fifth game because the GBA game came out, like, <laughs> on the same day. I jumped over the mushroom, cool. Um, but it's like, okay, it's the fifth Metroid game from a franchise that was 16 years old at this point. Like, Nintendo really just sat on Metroid for a long time, knowing that they had ideas for it. Uh, but I think it's because Metroid wasn't, was never super profitable, as much as I love this game, and I feel like it got a lot of good attention. Um, yeah, Metro Fusion came out on the same day, and I feel like maybe the day before in, in uh, release circles. But yeah, it's like, eh, it's kind of the same. This game's actually got bonuses if you link up um, your Metroid Fusion. I might as well mention that. So if you beat this game and then you play, this is why I meant, there's invisible bomb boosts. You can see them, they're just invisible. I don't have to deal with this room, man. Um, ah, here we go. Look at that! It's the same enemy, but it's Plasma Beam. So let's burninate him. This is my problem with this weapon. That was another, you know, 20-something ammo for something that really doesn't need to exist because these guys are legit just regular old space pirates. They, well, they're the stronger ones, but they still, you know, they're, they're taking damage from the Plasma Beam. But they don't really need that much, like, underneath that much damage to go on yeah, uh, yeah at least you can refill your, your stuff on the other room so that's fine love these fun little spider ball tracks they've just got installed all over the place by the way and then uh make sure you you oh hold on spot your grapple beam there you go long grapple beam over to the other side good thing you can scan this panel and just go past this wall this guy's, this guy's a bit concerned. I, I also like how they start mix and matching the space pirates a bit. Because you notice that they're all kind of the same in one kind of fell swoop. Uh, but yeah, yeah, nah. Um, I always feel like it's weird that, like, Metroid continue. Metroid does have such a cult following, like, even though it is a big Nintendo franchise. Like, <laughs> I just think that it's weird that there were, like, like, before, like, Melee came out the year before. Phase on radiation still in effect. Do not enter phase on processing area without level B radiation gear. It's 100% fatal. Oh, okay. 187% and rising? Oh my goodness. Um, I think there's another bit of lore down here as well. Sorry, I gotta read out more lore. Mega Pirate Absorption System test results are in. Field tests indicate that the system is very effective against beam weaponry. We are alarmed at the field's inability to handle missile attacks, however. Science team is working around the clock to correct this critical design flaw. The Mega Pirate cannot afford such a weakness in battle. So here we go. Space Pirate encrypted data. As we continue to observe the development of Project Helix's elite pirates, it becomes increasingly obvious that these warriors will usher in a new era of space pirate dominance. They're incredibly resistant to damage, and their ability to transport and wield so many weapons at once makes them the ideal mainstays of our ground forces. Though they are not as quick as typical pirates, it makes little difference. With a platoon of elite pirates and the vanguard of an army of normal and flying pirates, we will have a near indestructible backbone that should turn the tide in any engagement. And exactly, just more bits about this Omega Pirate. Also, apparently, he's, uh, nearly about to die. <laughs> so, cool. I believe, uh, this is... You can scan this. It's Cordite? Yeah, it's Cordite. So, uh, pull out a super missile. It's one of those burn five missiles, get five missiles kind of deal. So, okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, and yes, there is a door down here. There we go. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like... Metroid has kind of always been not that big a game. I don't think any game has really been more than 3 million in sales. Even Metroid Prime, which I think was the best-selling game until maybe Dread. I think Dread surpassed it, but even then, it's like, eh, 3 million? Like, Nintendo is riding a crazy success on Mario Kart 8. That game has somehow lasted so long, I would not be surprised if Nintendo pumps out just a little bit of extra boost the content even after the fact and yeah I it is a very like niche thing and obviously you know 
Japan with their first person shooters is just not as popular. I love this foggy room by the way, it's just a fun thing. But now, introduce! Oh my god, walk forward. Oh yeah, Pokemon. Pfft. Pokemon is amazing. It can get all this negative flack on, like, social media, and then this is on, ah, it still sells like 50 million. This guy is massive. Like, we've been fighting larger and larger space pirates. Scan this guy. This is the. Omega Pirate, the most powerful of the elite pirate forces. Omega Pirate can become invisible to normal sight. It is vulnerable when cloaked, as all energy is drawn from defense systems. By exposing itself to Phazon, it can regenerate damaged tissue and organs. Considered the pinnacle of the elite pirate program, this enemy should be handled with extreme caution and maximum firepower. Yeah, like, I mean, it's not like he still does the egg yolk force field, so. And he's still got the thing on his back. If anything, he's. It's kind of weird that he's not like that much different than the regular like elite pirates. And you can't stand closer, so if he does that dash attack, he's still chilling with the, the egg yolk. So you just go away. You're gonna take damage, but it's all fine. Um, I don't think it's like crazy more complex than Zelda, but definitely I feel like it lacks the. Um, it's got Western appeal. And I just wish that it didn't have to compete with Halo. Because Super Metroid is notorious amongst SNES owners. But yeah, this game doesn't exactly live it as much with the, the GameCube. The backtracking game. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't live as much with the GameCube audience as well as like Sunshine for some reason. So So anyway, he throws in a bunch of regular old space parts, but I'm just gonna completely ignore them. Because at some point, um any of these three little pulls of phase on this guy's gonna show up and he's gonna start sucking the phase on I'm burning my super missiles on it because this is a great place to use your super missiles it's possible to one cycle them. this is an amazing boss with the super missiles by the way. I, and I love by the way we're back to super missiles I actually might one cycle him. I might one cycle him. Wow. Come on. I did it. Easy. <laughs> so yeah, if if he if he's on the pools of phase on long enough, uh, he will regen back to his full strength. But listen, I'm a god. Okay, I'll just say that. Uh, and yeah, with the super missiles, he becomes so easy. Ignore the other space rides. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Just super missile him. I love it, it's just the super missiles as well. You could use the other beam combo, but they're kind of expensive. Four super missiles, that was 20 missiles. Anyway, the guy falls on you and you become black. Happy February, everyone. Uh, so here's the Phazon suit. This is the last item of the game to really pick up. Uh, I, and also two more artifacts which I need to get but uh, you are now able to just stand on the phase on which is kind of cool now kind of annoyingly and I do kind of hate this is that yeah I, I walked past one room which had a lot of phase on and there's one item is used in the one room it's kind of annoying it's just there one room also the power went out so there's more Metroids so I'm gonna see if I can... I'm gonna get good sucked, so this is what happens. You gotta get him off you like that. Oh, this is what I love. I, I might as well demonstrate this. So if a Metroid gets on you, and then you go through a... Oh, okay, well, never mind. It's a bad example. Uh, check this out, by the way. These guys just suddenly start showing up. These are Fission Metroids. They are Metroids with the ability to split into two forms. The Fission Metroids is a mutant capable of splitting into two. The split endows the new creatures with invulnerability to most weaponry. This effect is unstable, resulting in weakness to the type of weapon fire. The vulnerability appears to be random due to the chaotic nature of the phase on mutation. So kind of annoyingly... Uh, whoops. If you hurt the... Well... Also, yeah, very, very annoying. You got the bombers here. He can't be frozen. And then he eventually breaks into two Metroids. 
I, I am stuck up against the bomb. All right. But yeah, they break into two Metroids weak to certain beams, and only then is the ice ones weak to ice. This is what I mean by, like, having to go into the other rooms. Also, yeah, you got to deal with the Hunter Metroids and the Fission Metroids. This starts to get to a point where it's like, mmm, they do get a little annoying. Because switching between beams, and especially not being able to use the ice beam straight on the Metroids is like, oh, okay. So anyway, with the uh, Phazon suit, you're able to touch this Phazon. Touch Phazon? Yeah, okay, sure. I have 25 minutes left to beat the game. That's, uh, or else, uh, we're getting longer than the, the Tomb Raider. Although I'm weirdly not tired. I think it's just because I'm loving this game so much. And I, I love how they put all these things in the way because they want to stall your time trying to get to that artifact. Because, yeah, if you don't have the, uh, you know, the Phazon suit, well, what stops you from going all the way here? So 94% items, 93% logbook. That's incredible that were already like there. And yeah, that is the 11th artifact to pick up. The only one left is right at the beginning of the game. So let's you know, turn around and walk all the way back there. This guy's gonna make a mad dash at me in a moment. Or not. Uh, okay, that's what I get for that. And he's on me. At least the Metroids take turns. That's that's the one thing they got going for them. They're very good at waiting for the next guy. They're gonna they're gonna get on. Oh, okay. Nope, nope. This guy's about to get on me. Whoops. But you can't touch him. So. Oh my gosh. This is what, I I know I know you can power bomb him. I know. Alright, let's just take these guys out. Alright, very con very conveniently. They've broken into some ice beam ones. Oh, that's a wave beam one. Those the bombs also hurt them as well. But like, this is what I mean, is that like, if they're not the ice beam one, it's like, oh, And even if there's two of them, I'm making full sentences. The Ice Beam one, oh, he doesn't even freeze. But at least the Ice Beam is a strong weapon. The Wave Beam, well, not as much. So, I think that's pretty much the only time I'm going to be fighting these guys, unless I need them in the next room. There we go. Bit of in the dark platforming. I like how you can use the plasma beam to light up, light up the dark. Doom? Ah, uh, this is almost Doom. This is a uh, Metro Prime. I actually feel like uh, Doom 2016 takes a little bit of influence from how this game structures its jumping and its uh, um, kind of you know way to lay out a 3D world. Because one thing I love about this game is how, like, clear, almost, all the platforms are in the game. They've got these, you know, hard edges. Better than Doom? I love this game so much. This is my favorite game of all time. I think Doom 1993 is a super duper good game. I... I'm a little bit lukewarm on Doom 2016. I prefer Doom 3. Um... Here we are, finally back at this room, after I've spent so much time, there's some fission metroids about to cause a ruckus, but I love how large this room is, and you gotta take this, like, fun little elevator over here and watch the metroids struggle to get out. Um, and then there's a giant just, like, wall of- oh, hi there, hi there, how you doing? Oh, he's about to get on me. Whoops. Uh, but there's, like, all these, like, you know, platforms and stuff around here. Not really anything to do over here, it's just- just walk over to the other side, exit the room. And they put a, you know, an energy tank here. This is the last energy tank in the game. So now I have a full, big health bar that I can have basically 14.99 health in. And uh, here I am at 
Uh, oh boy, we've got more... Well, actually, yeah, these guys die the moment they touch phase on it. Kind of weird. You just get this guy, you just lure him to touch the ground. He dies, I don't know. Not sure, I guess. Uh, it's, this is the GameCube one. I, uh, I started playing it last week. Then they announced a remaster, and I was like, oh, okay. So, my footage might be immediately out of date. That's fun. Uh, is there invisible platform? There is! Look at that! And yeah, your invisible skills will get all the way over here. Only to then, I think you got a power bomb yet again. There's another missile! Hooray! More missiles! So I believe that is actually every item in the, uh, oops, in the, uh, phase on mines all done. Um, there is, like, there is that one room, um, I didn't mention it, and it's like, you see how it's got the yellow up arrow there? That's because directly above is this little room, which I just never go into. Just every time I run this game, I'm just like, eh, I don't really need to go in there. But this is what I mean, is that, like, if you get the, the power bomb, you're kind of encouraged to go out this way? But yeah, you need to get the grapple beam, you need to go up, so. Minus points game. Okay, I'm back up here. I'm pretty sure it's a plasma guy. There we go. Well, okay. I love them. <laughs> they just fall on the phase on. It's great. Uh, this is a bit of a meme kind of platform as well. There's two tracks. They did not fall into the phase on. That is going to throw me off. I'm sorry. That I know they are going to shoot me off and I'm going to fall down. What did he fall onto? He really fell onto that ledge down there. You really. There we go. I think the other guy fell all the way, but not that one. <laughs> I know they're going to cause me pain and misery, so. Now, I also know that there's another ice guy who is. I. Oh! I hate myself. <laughs> so while I'm climbing up this room, let me tell you about my sponsor, Raid Shadows. <laughs> I feel like there is a, uh, a weird degree of, like, in-stream sponsors. Like, I know Raid Shadow Legends is notorious for just embracing how many people they get on board with advertising Red Shadow Legends. It's because their rates are surprisingly not that aggressive for the amount of money that they actually do make. So they'd rather get everyone and everyone to, you know, read out a, uh, read out a sponsor segment than to, uh... Oh, it's a power beam guy. I could just hit him from here. Um, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a very different style of advertising, having, like, everyone say your product. And it's something that, like, a lot of advertisers seem to forget. It's like, sometimes, you know, it's very hard to, for bad advertising to really, like, pollute your brand. But a lot of them think that, oh, it gets a lot of negative attention on, uh, certain websites. I must react to it, I must respond to it. Clearly everyone on this website's a human being and isn't just manipulated forces or competing against each other. But uh... Yeah. The context for this is that uh, the Super Bowl happened and I can't forget uh, Microsoft's tweet from the Bing Twitter where they just said Bing Chilling. Sup, Mr. Crocodile? How's it going? True, true. A lot of a lot of people are very old when it comes to this stuff, so yeah. Uh look at this. Actually, yeah, you do get baited if you come into this room, because it's like you either need the phase on suit or the grapple beam in order to really I mean you could jump it. But still, it's just like, I don't know. Actually, yeah, yeah, I'll accept it. I'll rescind my, my criticism game. Uh, but yeah, no, so, for reference, home stretch. 
The only coal left is to walk to the end of the game. Unfortunately, I think this might take longer than 20 minutes. So this might actually be the longest stream on the channel. But you know what? Stop it. I love this game. It deserves it. And then you run out of power bombs anyways. This game is amazing, and you're about to see the very end of it, Crocodile. But you know what? It's worth it. This game is great. Everyone needs to play this game. This is one of the, like, I... Sometimes, like, you get those influencer-style videos, it's like, this game, you need to play before you die. But, like, I mean, I gush about this game. This is my absolute favorite game of all. Three boss fights? Pretty much, yeah. And a little bit of an area to explore. And I'm still missing two missiles. I feel like I might hit the end credits. Nah, I, I'm not gonna hit the end. Nah. I, I, I'm thinking like uh, three boss phases and a bit of walking and a bit of cutscenes and a bit of lore reading. That's gonna be tight. That's gonna be tight to even do that in 15 minutes. So. But I will tell you, it's not gonna be four hours. You get a GameCube. Ooh, nice. What kinds of games did you get for your GameCube? The GameCube is a wonderfully built little system. It's got a handle, and I don't know why they put a handle on it, but I love how small it is. Like, there's a lot of just bulky consoles from the time. Um, and there's something just wonderful about how small the GameCube is. One game. I don't know why I bought a PS5 with no games to buy. Granted, though, uh, the GameCube's got like a, a weirdly small but targeted library. It's definitely got a lot of good ones to pick up on, though. So here we are, back through this room yet again. And you'll be pleased to know that uh, there's a red door at the top of this room. Star Wars 5 1. Great choice. Great choice on that one. Luigi's Mansion. I have actually, fun fact, I've never played Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. Or the 3DS version, I guess. Just, just remember it's on the 3DS. So, you may be thinking, well, why didn't you get this, you know, missile? It's probably a missile. It's because you need the grapple beam and the plasma beam. So it's like, yeah. Gamers? No. Don't need them. This flower thing? I've actually, I've also never owned Melee, but I think I've played enough of it through like animation and friends places. So, hop up to here, and uh, there's some invisible platforms in the same way as on the other side of the Talon Overworld. There's some over here. So hop over here, and now you've got uh, two things. One is, hop up this ledge, and there's just casually a missile in the wall. Uh, no, no, they ported the original Luigi's Mansion to the 3DS as well. It's a very bizarre release. Because everyone was like, why? Why not the Wii U? Uh, melee at a friend's place? There you go. Missile expansion. One, yeah, no, the last missile expansion is right here as well. So that is it. Uh, I'm playing this on the Dolphin emulator, but I do have a GameCube copy of uh, this one. And I've played it pretty much for like ages. Um... Yeah, it's, it's weird, like, late 3DS is the most bizarre period of games. Ah, oh, rip, the 3DS is broken. Yeah, yeah, emulation works fine, it's definitely a bit more intensive than the average GameCube game, but I don't think it's impossible to play the first and second game on Dolphin. The third game does require, well, it's on the Wii, first of all, which still emulates in Dolphin fine, but, um, it does require a bit more, like, you gotta figure it out because you've gotta deal with the motion controls, so. Decent computer? Ah, oh, that's a good sign though. One of the shoulder buttons is broken. Ugh. So anyway, I'm back at the ship. I've gotten everything. This is every, uh, it's not gonna say 100% items, but the moment I pick up the last, like, you know, artifact, I'm pretty sure it flipped over. And if it doesn't, man, you know? Did I really miss one of those, uh, power bomb expansions? Did I really miss one of those? So anyway, I've never gone in here, but you can come in here immediately, only to then be greeted by uh, this little intro, I guess? It's showing you... Uh, I'm using an Xbox controller right now, actually. I could be using a GameCube controller with a USB, but I think it works fine with an Xbox controller, because the buttons are in roughly the right spots. 
Um, you get you get your analog triggers as well, which is nice for games like Sunshine. Um, so check this out. Uh, field team reports are in on an H structure of alien design built on the surface of Talon 4. Studies show the structure projects a containment field. This field bars access to a prime source, oh, there's the title, of energy within a deep crater. Science team believes the field is powered by a number of strange Trozo artifacts. Studies on possible resting places for these talismans have begun. As this field could hinder further energy production operations in Talon 4, we must dismantle it as soon as possible. If this means the destruction of the Trozo artifacts, it will be done. So, uh, yeah, so when you first come here, if you don't have the missiles, you know, you gotta come back. Once you get the missiles, you're able to walk into this area, no sweat, but your ultimate, you know, blockage at the end of this, and there's a big loading screen because the game knows that, oh, I'm gonna have to do a boss fight, aren't I? Uh, but you got a bit of lore on the side still. Uh, so here we go. Throughout our living nightmare, as we battle with this unyielding darkness, we chose our seal light. This light glows with promise, chasing the shadows cast by the great poison and purifying that which has grown toxic. It is strange, though. At times it looks to our eyes as if the light coalesces into the figure of a woman. Burning brightly, the luminescence descends from space and retreats back into the infinite blackness from whence it came. Whence this prophecy comes to pass, when the light recedes, the Chozo's long vigilance of containment will finally come to an end. There's a bit of a wall on the side, but that's okay. Pro tip for emulating games. What's your pro tip for emulating games? I got another Lord right up, sorry. The containment of the Great Poison. This task has fallen to the Chozo, and we will not flee from our duty. Even as we suffer with the land and its creatures, we will pour our will into the Twelve. The artifacts that, when brought together, form that lock that holds the great evil at bay in the depths of the planet. This lock must stand up to all who might come to assault it, to preserve the power of the seal and to protect it from those who would meddle for their own designs. We will spread the artifacts across the land, hiding them from prying eyes. The lock must never open until the day comes when this disaster can finally be put right. So, uh, FXA and the GPU. Um, I've never actually tried the, the GPU side uh, anti-aliasing, but I can imagine it's an okay setting for... Um, really mimicking the kind of blurry nature of, um, uh, you know, existing, uh, games. So, uh, this is the last artifact. It's just sitting here. Usually, what happens is that when you pick up, or this artifact, you get kind of shown all these surrounding, like, little talisman, or pedestals, totems. Yeah, AMD's got equivalent, I think, yeah. And you're able to scan these, and it gives you a hint about, you know, the the uh, artifact to pick up, and actually, if you look at this, oh, it just kind of tells you you're quiet. Okay. Now, unfortunately, yeah, I've picked up all of them, so this is kind of the last one, which means, uh, yeah, you're not going to see any of the rest now, but that's okay. This is the Artifact of Truth, the first of 12. Collect it, and then scan the totems here for clues on the locations of the remaining artifacts. Together, the artifacts will open a path to the center of the impact crater. And that's 100% all the pickups, so there you go. Image Gallery 4 collected, so that's all cool. Uh... Now hopefully, yeah, I've, I've the last bits of scans, and you're not going to know until I get to the very, very end boss as well. My favorite part is that I barely wrote down, like... I feel like I probably am missing some. We'll see. I definitely feel like with Dolphin, there's a setting called Anti-Blur, and I think it's on by default. I'm playing with it on... or with it on just to kind of like, you know, show the game a bit better. It kind of messes with the stream a little bit, so... Okay, me staying up for 18 hours is starting to really get to me, but... Dang it, this is Meta Ridley, I'm gonna stay up for this, man. If I fall asleep in the middle of the stream, we did it, boys, we did it. But I've done it before, so... Anyway, here's Ridley, uh, he uh, broke... Totem, whoops. Everyone likes a good Ridley. Yeah, he just bombs everything, I guess. So, uh, yeah, introduce Meta Ridley as a boss fight. Uh, let's walk up to him and scan him so that we know how to deal with him. So, this is Meta Ridley, a genetically enhanced Ridley metaform. Reborn and evolved through pirate technology, Meta Ridley is a fearsome enforcer. Its armored hide is extremely resilient, save for the chest, which has a thinner plating. The pirates have infused a number of potent weapons to the creature, including a multi-missile system, a kinetic, bre kinetic breath weapon, and a messin' bomb launcher, and an ultra-thermal flame strike projector. Meta Ridley is also a formidable melee combatant, making any sort of engagement a risky proposition. 
I like how common Ridley is as an enemy, but uh, yeah, no, he takes his time. You can see his health really gets there. He's got an exposed chest, and this big thing. But one thing I love about this fight is that, uh, especially when you come to this area, like, for the first time, you know, you got all these totems here, and they do mean something to the game, because it's like, hey, this is, you know, where you get your advice on where to go. And then here comes Ridley, and he just ruins it. He just absolutely ruins this thing that was giving you all this guidance and help throughout the game. You know, he's, he just sends these bombs and suddenly all these all these pedestals just break. So you're out of here, you're gonna show him who's boss. Unfortunately, yeah, he's one of those fights where he also just kind of wanders around. Like, I don't think there's anything he can do while he's doing this. And then he's gonna come back, he's gonna drop his bombs. These totems do drop them. Do I drop health? Nope. He's just chilling out here, but... Yeah, he has a bullet sponge in the original, I'll tell you that. And some Metroid. He eventually gets on the ground, because why not? And then he just leaves. I feel like this, this super missile might be a bit more potent. Keeping them a bit. This help actually. I'm curious if the flamethrower is actually like a good thing to use. Oh, he's so close to half his health. Half his health is uh, when we start getting to the second phase. You know how these bosses gotta do? They gotta do two phases. Look at that, he's firing his laser and also dropping the bombs, but he keeps on forgetting. That's how old I am, I'm sorry. Uh, Lose Yourself isn't like that old. It's an old song. I can't it at the same time as this game. Is that really not half his health? We done that, there we go. So once you've hurt him enough, he uh, drops down onto the ground. The ground, Ridley. Ridley, Ridley is supposed to come down here. This is a short name for Ridley, because Ridley is an actual first name as well. What do you call him? Riddy? Riddy? Rudy? Riddo? The Rids? Ridda? I thought he was supposed to land when he's on half his health. I think you can see, I think his health actually starts coming back a little bit as well. But... Still think songs that came out 20... Oh, exactly. I actually, I listened to, um, as a, one of those songs of the day. I listened to uh, Origin of Symmetry for the first time, uh, today. I thought it was fairly good. I didn't, like blow my mind, I feel like the second half is maybe a little bit weaker, but I did really dig, like, what it was going for. And then it's like, yeah, it does... This is a very, like, lukewarm taste. It's like, yeah, alternative rock band really sounds a bit like Radiohead, although I think Matt Bellamy's singing really tries to like, be a bit too much like Tom York. Um, but I think that the compositions work pretty fairly well. Pocket Baby's a great track. Um... I love how kind of bombastic he makes it sometimes as well. Wow, yeah. How long did I get into this fight before finally he gets into the second phase? So this second phase, you have uh, burnt his wings enough that, uh, well, no flying left, but that's okay. He's about to terrorize you on the ground. Okay. So this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to hit him in the... Uh, I should actually be using the... Uh, You gotta get him in the mouth, because he's a bit protective about his, uh, about his tummy. This, the flamethrower does nothing. The flamethrower does nothing. And yeah, it's a bit awkward, like, all the different timings that you can get him in his face, but... Oh, 
Come on. There you go. Come on. There we go. Oh. He's definitely a very, like, cheeky boss to deal with, but, to be honest, you got plenty of health. This guy is tricky. He is, he's is got a fair bit going on. There we go. Bit more fire in his heart, just to say. Which uh, also unleashes his angry mode, where he's a little faster now. The timing on hitting him there is a bit trickier now. But yeah, no, he's definitely a fair bit involved. I mean, it is Ridley. You gotta make him a bit tricky. Oops. Almost there. Also, happy 12 o'clock. It's officially three and a half hours of stream. I'm still yet to even enter the final area of the game. Anyways, with that, Ridley is being defeated. He cowers, he falls over, he embraces, uh, lasers. I guess I'm firing my own laser. And then he falls off and no wings means uh, definitely dead and won't return in any sequels. Well, it turns out that these rectangles were here in our memories all along, and the Chozo ghosts were very pleased by how long that boss fight took, but they think, you know what, let's torture this person one more, and send them to a brand new area of the game. Also, I love this rain, I just want to comment on the rain a bit more. Love it. Uh, beware, there's a little bit of voice acting that just happens out of nowhere. Impact Crater. I don't know who put that in there, but it made me jump the first time I heard it. <laughs> It's just, oh, it just, it just happens, though. So anyways, here we are, the very last set- It's not in the US version as well, so if you've ever played the US version, like... <laughs> yeah. There's apparently a line in-game, uh, in the files for the Talon Overworld as well, but not for any other area. But they never say the Talon Overworld, I've never... Yeah. So this is, um, Super Phazon? You got the Phazon suit, and then you're immediately told, Don't touch anything, don't do it. This is a Lumigek, a phazon charged reptile. Nate is a talent for the Lumigek's travel in swarms to increase their odds of survival. They absorb and radiate phazon energy, making these swarms a threat. How many scans have I got? 97? Oh boy, I am hoping I haven't missed one, because I'm thinking there's only two more scans, aren't there? Let me jump through all my logs. If you see if you see anything missing, whoops. There should be two enemies left probably right at the bottom and if I missed any dang it but I'm pretty I'm pretty sure because I know there's like a hundred and six what did I miss what did I miss what's between aqua drone and mega turret ah because yeah these are where the two are dang it dang it did I miss any of these Oh, so good. Oh, so good. Hold on, I'm actually gonna look up. I'm actually gonna look up. Metro Prime scans. I, I know that there's a thing that tells you, like, what all the scans are. Uh, Metro Prime .retropixel.net. Great website. Appreciate it. Anyway, I'm scrolling through. What did I miss? Is it worth running back and getting? Because I'm thinking, well, now I'm at this. Okay, what's between Aqua Drone and Mega Turret? The Aqua Pirate? Oh, do I go back for it? Let's do it, let's do it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going back for it. This is a terrible decision. <laughs> no, 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 that was it. Overworld. There it is! There it is! <laughs> well, today I learned. That was the only thing I was missing. I, sc I scrolled through research and artifacts. I've clearly gotten everything, so that's all fine. It's just that. Like, hold on, just to just to super double check. Um, 
Like, this was... Well, as in, I, I scrolled through this, and then I didn't see anything missing in research. Creatures, like, I'm scrolling through, nothing missing, nothing missing. Aqua pirate. Uh, hold on. Aqua pirate there, and then nothing until two at the end. That is true. It's weird that that is the only one, though. I love how I was just like, oh, I'm getting so tired. And this is like, nah, man. I'm backtracking so I can show off those image galleries. And I can flex, so I actually got this. Man, isn't it weird that, like, both my original Let's Play in 2010 and now, I just, I missed one. But, yeah, fortunately, I think it might be as soon as I get into the, uh, aquatic part of the... Yep, we're longer than Tomb Raider. Also, the worst part is me walking in the other direction means, uh... This is longer and longer to, uh... To completing, so who knows? We're we actually doing four hours now. I'm gonna be so exhausted tomorrow morning, I'll tell you that. It's worth it. Okay, we're just looking for Aqua Pirates. If you see a space pirate in the water, please call 1800 Wendo needs to scan. No! Okay, I, I'm very certain the Aqua Pirates are probably just, you know, in the, uh... The room with the, um... Hold on. Why, why am I dumb and not able to figure out what is going on over here? It's a Morph Ball part, that's why. Uh, what game will you play next then? Um... It's both a mystery and I haven't decided yet. Uh, I have an idea of two games I would like to play. But I'll leave that to be a mystery. Um, the general trend seems to be games that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. That seems to be pretty much the only thing I play. Alright. Yeah, it's a bit of a trek. It's a little bit of a trek, but... But yeah, I'm hoping that, uh, these water pirates are on this side, and especially in this room, and hopefully they respawn. But they're not, I mean, on this retro pixel.net, they're not listed with an asterisk, so they're not missable. Because they do say, like, Ice Shriek Bats are missable. I'm pretty certain they're in this room. There you go. I literally just didn't scan these guys. That was it. I, I just walked past them. Aquapire, space pirates with exoskeletal... Uh, exoskeletons modified for underwater use using modified thruster packs and gravity suit technology. The space pirates have armor suits for use in liquid environments. Thermal tracking is still very useful against these units, as its pirate engineers have yet to eliminate the thruster packs in high heat signature. Yeah, I, uh, I do feel like the, um... Like, especially the early 2000s, like, that's just when, like, so many games and so many genres really hit, like, peaks. Um, it's not saying that new games suck, there's obviously, like, great stuff, great games coming out all the time, but it's definitely hard to be revolutionary in a world where there are so many great games out there, and I feel like the only way you can really keep being relevant is just by being the new big game, and that's okay, that's fine, but, you know, I will eternally talk about Metroid Prime as this game that, you know, I can just feel inspiration dripping from so many other titles, and then it's like... I, well, I was gonna say Breath of the Wild, that's not a great example, is it? So many games that, you know, if they're not inspired by Metroid Prime... Sorry, by um, Breath of the Wild, they certainly came from the same school of thought that inspired it. Um, like Horizon Zero Dawn is a good example. Um, now you get to see what it looks like going through this backwards, but yep, that was the one scan I needed. I am glad it was that close to where I was, but I am a little bit sad I didn't log that one. So yell at me, yell at me, I didn't I didn't have that one down, but here's a question. Every time I stop and read more, the in-game clock pauses. So I'm curious if this stream is gonna because my save was less than two hours. Last, uh, 
between the last stream, so I'm curious. I don't think it'll be less than 4. But I'm hoping it'll be 420. If it's actually 420 on the dot, I will be kind of happy. Uh, Dreamcast PS2, GameCube, Xbox, maybe the Pinnacle Gaming. Lots of newer games too, and much older ones, yeah. I think there's certainly, like, some charm to games from the early 90s really getting it right. Like, there's games like Super Mario Bros. 3, which is actually 89, so I guess, yeah. Um, Crystalis is one that I hold dear to my heart. It's a, um, Super Metroid is obviously great. Um, Doom, I mentioned earlier. Um, PC is great as a platform now, though, because, like, yeah, you get to really, you know, experience everything. And in whatever way you want now. Um, because, you know, emulation is so strong now. Um, you've got so many control points. Uh, the interfaces to deal with things is a lot more well-known. It used to just be, like, a complete you know, crapshoot, whether, like, you have a game and whether it really, like, works well in your system. Games were just designed for a very particular set of hardware, and if you just didn't have that hardware, whoops. But now it's like, you know, you can have a graphics card that was made, like, last month. Impact Crater. I just wanted to be silent for that. You can have a graphics card made last month playing games that use graphics cards from 1996, which is totally not what they were meant for, and totally not what your graphics card is meant for. But someone knows how to make that work on that, because the the abstraction is so good, so. Okay, <laughs> take two on the uh, the impact crater. But the impact crater is a fairly short um, affair. You've got this one jump here. Watch out for the super phase on. I don't know what they really call it. Uh, and then you got this one room with a giant tooth. Uh, you've also got actual Metroids just being obnoxious. So here's a pro strat. When the Metroid is super obnoxious, use your ultimate weapon. And also platforms? There's just a lot of platforms in space. I feel like... <laughs> I'll dock another mark, because, I don't know, these platforms just... Literal platforming. These Metroids are not getting in my way. Like, they, they do spawn a bit away. I love these little, like, little babies swimming in here as well. Hold on, can we do this? Where this guy hugs on my face, and then I just walk through the door. I just want to walk through the- they won't let me get through the door, will they? Okay. Well, point is, uh, where there was a safe station down below, there's a missile station right here. Isn't it kind of weird that this is, like, inside the impact crater? This is, like, the place where the space pirates couldn't get? Yes, this is the third missile station. Technically, the ship counts as one. Also, yes, the missile station does recover your ammo. And yes, that's the ultimate weapon. A power bomb kills the Metroids immediately. These are the fission Metroids as well, the really annoying kind. It's your best way to get around these guys until one responds. Oh, exactly, yeah. Finally, you gotta have a little bit of a spider ball track. You could just walk this. You, you could literally just take the damage. You know what? It's a cool corridor. And I love the look of the spider ball tracks, even though, again, how very conveniently similar to the other spider ball tracks we are. But here we are, finally. Welcome to the final boss of the game. Oh, and, my, and my computer's freezing. Nice. Every time it freezes, it's just because I've got, like, discs that just catches on something. I don't know why. No matter what the disc is, no matter where the content is, if a disc freezes, window freezes for a moment. Now, this is a very... first time I went here, I was like, I was super intimidated by the look of this guy. Oh, he scan? Nope, he's not. He just runs off, though. He's afraid of you. I love this jump that Samus does into the next room. So, behold, this is the Metroid Prime, the name of the game, I guess. It is the Prime Metroid. Uh, highly evolved Phazon producing life form, the aberration known as the Metroid Prime is the source of Phazon, making it immensely powerful. The genetic flaw makes it susceptible to certain weapons for brief periods, since only its head is truly vulnerable, other attacks are a nuisance. Offensively, Metroid Prime has a number of natural and mechanical weapons at its disposal. These include ultra freaking breath, multi missiles, snare beams, and particle wave projectors. Its massive strength and bomb. I thought I went the whole stream without having to deal with that word. Make it lethal in melee combat. Recommended maximum firepower when engaging this enemy. And he's about to fire a big beam. That beam hurts a lot, so if you let that hit you, it's a bit loose. 
Now this guy, he does take the beam combo, so if you're able to hit him with the super missiles, that's super good. And yeah, they gave him a human face. Also, I love how he gets a bit closer. And then, yeah, you're right. He does uh, take different beam weapons. Now, fortunately, the wave beam is more useful than you'd expect. Because uh, it homes in on his face. The one useful part of a wave beam is the fact that it homes in. Making it actually really good for fast enemies. Like this guy, because his face is super tiny. Yeah, why did they have to give him a human face? I don't know, but... I think it's to give it this, like, weirdly you know, uncanny feeling. It's not just a alien, it's an alien that looks kind of... You know, it's not human, it's clearly like a crab or something. Now, watch out for the smelly breath. The smelly breath pulls you forward. Also, every time you hit him now, and he, you know, goes black for a moment, you gotta roll up into a ball and cover through here. I appreciate, uh, as well, your, um... Uh, you always face the way that he's facing. Um... Oops. Oh, I just got hit with a super missile. Oops, nice. Don't worry about burning your missiles, by the way. You just... This is where they all go. This is where your missiles go to die. The power bomb, unfortunately, gets it no love. I love you can get hit with your own beams. Yeah, I don't know, he just takes a bit of heat. It's nothing really too weird. If you're standing forward enough, like, he's not going to swing at you, but also his shots don't hit you. So... And he keeps falling down these holes. I don't know why hitting him so many times makes him fall. Uh, here's his grapple beam thing, by the way. You got a boost ball, which for some reason pushes towards him sometimes. It's okay. Watch out for these, like, lasers as well. They change depending on what, uh, what he throws at you. So the power beam just does a lot of damage. The, uh, I guess while he's on plasma beam mode, he actually, you know, does burn damage. But this ice beam, that freezes you. That's really annoying. And, uh, wave beam, no lock on. I like how it's got that, uh... Oh, that? There you go. I was frozen today. It's got that little melodic kind of motif in there, in this weirdly distorted kind of way, and I think that's actually a wonderful... Whoever did the music on this game, it's a great job, because I feel like how to make Metroid feel alien and bizarre is to add just tritones and weird synth noises all over the place. Ah, he swung. Now he's gonna start getting a bit annoying as well because he's gonna start switching beams on you mid, <laughs> like in the middle of you trying to hit him. Oh, come on, I'm trying to get you with a stupid missile. There you go. He takes he takes a lot of a lot of heat. I'll tell you that, but he's constantly getting a bit more aggressive each time. Yes. Oh, there goes my lock-on for a moment. Which I guess is probably the worst thing when you're trying to do the lock-on base mode, isn't it? This game's terrifying, but, you know, you feel equipped. That's your, the big thing that makes it less scary in my eyes. Is that, like, you're not the weak person you were um, six or seven hours ago in the game. You are, like, you know... You are decked out. You are in the super cool suit that's glowing. It's like, it's doing something weird around the edges. And you got all these tools at your disposal, so... Even though it's a little scary just for the alien aspect, I think it... It's much more comforting than maybe you'd expect. But Metroid has never been one to... completely shy from the, uh, the mild senses of horror. Metro Dread is a perfect example, isn't it? Samus, you are literally about to be chased by, like, insta-kill robots. Also, yeah, just magical ice. He's not even listening. He's not even on ice beam mode. Yeah, Fusion is pretty creepy. Fusion's got these, like, real creepy, like, GBA synth noises all over the place. 
think what makes this guy kind of spooky is that uh, he's got his crap spider legs. Also, <laughs> oh yeah, the music is distorted as heck, but isn't that kind of, you know, the point of the Metro Prime as an entity? Is that he's all filled with deep poison, I guess? Alright, okay, don't you check. Changed on me, he's changing on me, I'm not liking him. I think he's uh, due for one more hit. He really takes his sweet time as well, doesn't he? Oh my gosh. And he just he just jumped the gun. He just jumped the gun. He's like, oh. Today I will jump over. You know what's weird? He's got another attack. Where he launches some balls that uh, like come up around the corners of the rooms. Those balls deal quite a fair bit of damage to you, uh, but you basically gotta just stop shooting at him and start shooting at the balls to take him out. He didn't do that attack once that whole run. That was very odd that he never did any of that, but anyway, deep and ominous hole because obviously if he fell down another hole, well, how different was that from the last five holes? But it uh, turns out that uh, you have just been shooting his uh, shell. I guess he really is a crab. And in comes this uh, goopy brain monster. Meet the, uh, I guess this is also the uh, Metro Prime. The core essence of the Metro Prime scan indicates that the Metron, e the Phazon energy for the Metro Prime is invulnerable to all conventional weapons. Only attacks from a Phazon fused arm cannon will damage it. It generates pools of Phazon when it attacks. Use these to fuel your suit's Phazon weapon system. The entity can also spawn Metroids to assist it in battle, rendering itself invisible when it does so. There you go. I'm happy. I'm happy I did manage to get that. So, uh, so anyway, this guy's just gonna chill for a bit. There's really nothing you can do, apart from let him just destroy everything around you. This is your one saving grace that you get to heal in the middle of the fight. Oh yeah, me like charging a weapon. Really, that's just to draw things in, but he's a creepy brain thing who comes super close. Anyway, he does this, he makes a pool, and then what he does is that he switches into another um, observable reality. Oops. So you gotta stand in the pool, which activates hyper mode. You then just lock on and hold A and hope for the best. And then you just gotta watch him while he's in another. You know, another uh, observable spectrum, I guess. He's just gonna do that one attack where he does a. I think I refer to it as a generic ground pound, even though it's not really a ground pound, but it's a shockwave across the ground. Now, he's gonna spawn a bunch of Metroids, which, uh, no sweat, because you have. Annoyingly. Oh my gosh, really? Because the pool dries up in time as well, so the more the Metroid feed you off, I think the less time you get to deal with the pool. I'm still taking out a bit of his health though. The music is still great though, I love it, and I love the look of this fight, just... I don't know, the, this like, thermal, thermal mode of this guy is creepy as... What is it, the X-ray? Oh, I, I love how I switch to expecting to like, see any difference. Alright, well, stuff it, I'm just doing the power bomb already. Did he really hit me this time? I love the look of the, the power beam as well with the phase on. Okay, well. Cool. And yes, they did just drop a power bomb for me. This is the intended strat. You burn the missiles on the first half, you burn the power bombs on the second half. I'm glad that there actually is some strat that you get to use with all the, the different tools at your disposal. And yes, you can use the Phazon Beam to destroy the Metroids, but... You gonna do a pull? Nope. It's not pull time yet. But yeah. I guess in, in hindsight, I mean, you've been hearing me gush about this game for so long, bro. There you go, just take him out easy. But, uh, I, I will just repeat as well, I have enjoyed playing this game so late into the night. And I will continue enjoying playing this game so late into the night, maybe not too night, but... 
I am very glad that, you know, a bunch of you are following along and just, you know, <laughs> letting me indulge a bit in playing this game, but I think also, like, this should be a, an open invitation. And especially, now we're at this point where we're like, man, you know, if Nintendo are just going to announce remakes of, or re remasters of games that I just play on my channel, because Warrior Land 3 I played on my channel, uh, you know, the week before, and uh, now it's on the uh, Switch Virtual Console. I'm just gonna shoot like this. I hope you don't mind. Oops. Okay, I got I got no more water. But this is I don't know. This is a treat of a game to me. I think the gameplay is top shelf. I think visually it's so striking. The audio is great. There's so much, I mean the replayability is just like, on the surface, it's just getting the pickups and getting the scans, and there's one more, oh, I don't know if there's, I think, is there an art gallery for beating the game on, on the hard setting? Because once you beat the game, you get to play it again on hard. So, I guess, yeah, if you think I'm playing this game so easy, you know, if there's a hard difficulty, you get to do all this again, but... Double the damage. Yeah, if you're gonna play one Metroid game, this one. Hands down. I think it's eternal. I don't think this game is gonna age. Even even as well. Like it, it's like the very bizarre thing is that like this is a console shooter that doesn't use the twin stick control, and I think it works perfectly fine without it because the D-pad for the visors, the C stick for the beams, this works. Let's launch one more. One more of these. Where's he gone? Hi there. Hit him so much, and he uh, struggles to exist in reality. Also, yes, it is indeed before 12.30. I managed to actually beat it before four hours. But unfortunately, it was great. I will play the remake. I'm not going to play it on stream because I feel like, you know. There's nothing much more to gain other than watching me play this game on hard mode and watching the same game with better visuals, but... Uh, interestingly, there's the Metroid Prime pulls off the Phazon suit, and Samus is still okay standing right next to this, with no Phazon suit. Uh, perhaps there was a part in the game's draft requiring you to evacuate, but the game kind of just takes you out, so beating the Metroid Prime is indeed the end of the game. And here comes the ship. Obviously Samus can survive an infinite fall. Chozo's faith in Samus has been well rewarded. And now a new star shines in the universe. The bounty hunter, Samus Aran. What future? Yeah, she takes off her helmet. There you go. You don't get any zero suit in this one, unfortunately, but... You know what? Someone's gonna draw a human face on the GameCube at some point. Totally hasn't happened before this. Nope. Eternal Darkness, what's that? Geist, what's that? Oh, well. And that was it. That is, indeed, Metroid Prime. So, yeah, I just want to reiterate, I love this game so much. And I hope, if you enjoyed watching me play through it, legit, go pick it up and play it. I feel like I could sales pitch this, but I just love this game so much. I just feel like my understanding of this is, this is starting to get, like, you know, what's the term? Pretentious, but, like, I feel like this game helps me really understand how video games, um, you know, really, really work or really structured. Um, how does this game even work on a technical level? I got no clue, man. But, yeah, no, I hope you all have enjoyed me gushing, me commentating over all of this. Uh, barely getting into any uh, current political topics. We just, you know, all I got to riff on was an IGN article that became strangely relevant in the second stream. Um, and yeah, uh, oh yeah, Pikmin 4 is great in the direct, um, 
Uh, I'm still looking for the Zelda. I, I, I really enjoyed Breath of the Wild. Um, oh yeah, I could, I could sell Metro games all, all the time, yeah. The worst part is that I am... Oh, no problem, Crocodile. If you, and yeah, if you enjoyed this stream, uh, I mean, yeah, I stream every week. I'm probably not going to stream for four hours every week, but I'll definitely, um, you know, at the same time, just once every week. <laughs> I mean, I've been up for too long. I woke up at 6.15 this morning. It is 12.29 a.m. Metroid Prime calls, man. Metroid Prime calls. Uh, but yeah, no, this is a... This is a treat for me to play through again. And I, I hope as well that, like... I guess as a comparison to my old Let's Play... Uh, back in 2010, I hope that this is a, uh, yeah, catch up with some future streams, or any old streams as well, because they're all on my YouTube. They're all just re-uploaded there, so it's all good. Um, but yeah, if, uh, maybe at a later point, I'll play Prime 2, Prime 3. Maybe not this year, because I've got a lot of games where I just do that. I just, like, play through multiple games in the same franchise, and I go, you know, if I juggle enough games, then I'll just be playing games in a franchise over and over again, like just different games. Or you could binge a franchise, but I feel like that's a... You know, that leads people into thinking that you play only that kind of game, and it's like, yeah, at some point I'm done with all the... You know, the Metroids, for example, or something like that. I don't know if they did the voice in other languages. I still... that voice is weird, because it's not in the American version which is the original version of the game, fun fact. Actually, or is it? It was the Japanese version. The Japanese has the scan Pfizer jump, doesn't it? Sorry, it has the, um... Yeah, it does, yeah. So, I don't know. Help, it's full motion video that you couldn't tell is full motion video when you got the blur on because it's 60 frames a second. The Japanese did the original? Okay. It's weird because the Japanese version also has the, the dub. Anyway, have a wonderful screen telling you, you did a good job. You got 100%. 4 hours 50, that is not 4 hours 20. But you know what, it's less than 5 hours and I'm happy. Oh, the American version was last. That's weird that they took it out. Anyway, if you end the game with 100%, you get this short little snippet. No bikini- Ah, oh, no, no bikini shot. Bad game. Prime 2 gets you covered. Prime 3, you don't want to see that. Listen, we gotta end the end the game with creepy eye and squelching noises. And yeah. This game, I love it. And I, I, just before we leave as well, I thought you'd like to see the art galleries that I've unlocked. So you unlock one art gallery for beating the game um, with a... Uh, well... Actually, yeah. Do I have all the art galleries, or am I missing one because I didn't beat the game on hard mode? I think you do unlock one on hard mode. Let's let's scroll down to the image gallery. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm missing image gallery three. So, because I didn't play the game on hard mode, you can find these on the. Uh... Yeah, no, I appreciate you coming every single time, Blob. It's great. Um. So check out these uh, bits of concept art. They're super cool. I love them as well. I think they've captured the uh, the sci-fi aesthetic very nicely. Which I guess is a great, like, you know, way of adapting Metroid. Oh yeah, exactly. I mean, that's why I, I love playing these games. Because if I can just inspire someone to play a game that I enjoy, that's, you know... That's a treat. That's what I love. I feel like there's some, like, people and they're like, Oh, you should not play this game. And I'm like, bro, like, you know, I think we should be showing the games that we want to get other people to play. It'd be pretty cool, yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, maybe over the next couple of years, they... This would Prime 2. I think Prime 2 is a great follow-up game. Look at this guy, my favorite enemy. So yeah, this is Gallery 2. I 
I love some of these enemies, I'll tell ya. Space pirates. Super cool. That guy's very cool. These are all just cool concept arts. But yeah, I don't have Gallery 4, because I think that's only available when you beat the game in hard mode. So, uh, you're gonna have to use your imagination. Also, I love how, literally, yes, every little piece of art used in the scan entries. Just all sitting on one page. It's very cool. And then, uh, yeah, so, it, anyway, I, I didn't even mention, if you plug in Metroid Fusion right now, you can play through the whole game with the Metroid Fusion suit. Which has special versions based on the, uh, like, the upgrade you've got. Also, I guess, this is just generally art for Metroid Fusion. Now I'm looking at it. But it's because it is co-developed, I guess. They made both of these alongside. And I love how, uh, here we have to explain how the, how does the boost ball work. It's good fun, like, trying to, what is the mathematical operation of where the camera is in space? And then there he is. The Prime himself. Very creepy brain, and obviously, gotta have a face on him. A little bit of art for the ending cutscene as well. The end? So there you go. Uh, how does this play? I think it, it plays fine. The only thing I guess on the 360 pad is that you don't have the, um, the physical, like, thing guiding the stick to go up. It's like, on an Xbox controller, you just got free movement with nothing but clicking a direction. But I don't think that really matters for the C-Stick. Your direction is, like, very general enough, it doesn't matter. And on the left stick, as long as, if you had, if you, you know, if you, if you think it's too, too uh, sensitive, you just modify your dead zones. And the triggers work fine, so that's all that matters, really. And you don't hit Z, so you're not really doing anything weird there. Um, but yeah, other than that, I will call it there, so... Thank you all so very, very, very much for watching. If you enjoyed the stream, uh, feel free to follow. Um, and yeah, watch me. If you miss any bit of this, you can just watch the VOD sometime on YouTube later. Um, I am super tired. Because I don't usually stay up until 12.36, but I'm so glad I managed to beat this game on two streams. Um, maybe I should have called it. Maybe I should have like gone, eh, okay. Um, you know what? It was worth it. I enjoyed it, and I hope you all enjoyed it as well. That's the most important part. So, um, yeah, if you if you want random ramblings, you can follow me on uh, Twitter or my Chroma at m.bando.com. That one's also pretty cool. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, the bot's on YouTube, and if you want to see any other stuff, that's all on YouTube. So, until next week, stay safe, eat your greens. Please don't stay up as late as I do, please. And. Uh, Play this game, because you actually, you have no excuse now. You have to. Yeah, exactly. So, have a good one, everyone. See ya.